the girl lived a modest life, not even realizing that she was the protagonist of the novel, namely the lost princess Eclette. She was swept away by the whirlpool of fate and supplanted by the false princess, who is the main villain Shaley, who took her rightful place. But in the end, she got her title back and fell in love. This is the whole plot of this web novel. The reason why the girl, a person who has absolutely no interest in web novels, read Rose of Isonia so carefully is because it was written by her younger sister. But the girl did not understand why she was reborn as Shaley. She's a princess, so she doesn't have to worry about money all the time, but she's an antagonist. Everyone will disown her after it becomes known that she bullied Eclette. She will have to endure many painful tortures, after which she will be burned alive at the stake. The girl thought it was wrong. She hated Shaley so much. Plus, she's a princess. It's so burdensome. The maids greeted the princess politely. The maids asked where Her Majesty would like to go for a walk today. She said that during today's tea party, they would serve the princess. The girl believed that something so ridiculous could not be pleasant. Such wastefulness did not suit her. But after a while getting used to it a little, she decided that it might actually suit her. Jae Yoon Yoon forced herself to pull herself together. Even if she rested her body, her brain must work. If Akleta returns, then everything will end. She couldn't sit still. Besides, her place actually belongs to someone else. All this belongs to her younger sister. Jaehee's gift gave her a second chance at a good life. Yes, besides, the girl decided that everything was not so bad. If you think about it, all a girl has to do as an antagonist is just lay low. Eun Yun will make every effort not to meet any of the main character's henchmen. The girl will live peacefully until Akleta appears and then disappears. Then each of them will have a happy ending. She decided that she would save some money, leave the palace, and live freely. The girl no longer had to think about bills. She didn't have to work late. She could also try a huge number of cakes that she could not afford before. Yoon Yoon promised herself that she would live this life to her satisfaction, as good as Jae Hee would want for herself. This is what she wanted. The woman asked her highness to forgive Eclet for her recklessness, because her daughter was still studying and studying. The woman admitted that she would like to introduce her son to the princess, and offered to go to a more convenient place. The woman suggested that perhaps the girl thought there was no point in this, but she assured that he was an incredibly talented boy. The woman noted that the boy was still very young, but she was sure that he would become an excellent friend for Her Majesty. The girl really wanted it to be like this. Seeing the crying girl, Yun Yun didn't understand what she was thinking about. She couldn't get close to them. She just needed to leave. She really should have left, but here a small and very cute child was crying. How could the girl pretend that she didn't notice anything? She decided that if she couldn't just ignore her, then she had to protect Eclet. Having greeted the girl, the princess extended her hand, offering her, instead of hiding in such a place, to go with her. The girl decided that she would make Ecleta the next empress. Princess Shelia was known for her beauty. The maid greeted the noble princess. She is the eldest daughter of the Macmillian family, Anna Macmillian. She said that she was honored to serve her majesty. The princess noted that the maid's hair was as beautiful as the sky at sunset. The girl decided that this was such a loss for someone like her. The maid did not immediately understand what she meant. Her terrible temper, hot temper, and cruel behavior became the reasons why people began to avoid the princess. Therefore, no one was upset when she died. Opening her eyes, the girl decided that it was just a dream, but then realized that these were her memories. She decided that Shelia was abnormal and did not understand why she decided to live her life this way. One of the maids timidly knocked on the door calling for the princess. Another noted that if they came in now, they would probably get a slap, so she suggested they wait a little longer. The goddess Isonia descended into this world for the sake of the people whom she loved with all her heart. She destroyed all the demons in this world and founded an empire. Isonia became an empress respected by the people. And only those in whom her blood flows can become rulers. But her descendants are also capable of changing the world, using the knowledge and magic received from her. The girl did not understand anything, what other demons and magic. She decided that it was better to read some science fiction. In any case, the first ruler was a woman, but all those who followed were men. If you think about it like that, Shelia was the older twin, but her brother became the crown prince. The girl decided that it would be too problematic if a person like Shelia ascended the throne.
The girl wondered if there were always so many events in this story. She was already seeing several plot holes. She decided that this was not the most important problem right now. Only her descendants can change the world. The girl did not expect that her end would be so obvious. She had to escape before the emperor found out that she was not his real daughter. She wondered if it would be a problem for a girl who was used to hiding her identity as a princess to return to the palace again. She needed money. The girl always dreamed of moving out of a rented apartment, but even now, having become a princess, she still needed money. But in order to earn money, she had to have at least some skills. Shalia's memories haven't fully returned yet. They are becoming more and more clear, but there is still time before Ekleta appears. The girl had to lay low until then. The girl decided that she could enjoy a little all the delights of the life of a princess. She thanked her for the food, which surprised the maid a little. The maid said that the princess should refrain from overly sweet desserts. The girl really wanted more, a little more. She asked Marion why it was impossible, since she had already recovered. The maid noted that, of course, it was still a little early, but the princess should already start getting in shape. After all, she was supposed to become the most beautiful bride. The girl did not immediately understand which bride she was talking about. She immediately fearfully asked who her wedding was supposed to be with. The maid immediately replied that, of course, with Sir Tesric. She decided that the princess was still not well after her fainting spell. Tesric is the main character, and he is Shelia's fiancé in the novel. But the girl did not remember the wedding being in the novel. If the villain and the main character are in place, then what will happen to the main heroine of this world? The princess decided that Tesric Roitanjen was impudent. The only thing he has is the glory of his family. The girl didn't understand whether it was really so difficult for him to attend one banquet. After all, she was the princess of this empire. Suddenly, the maid sneezed, immediately froze, and began to tremble with fear. Raising her hand, the princess became angry that even someone like her dared to irritate her. The girl involuntarily shuddered from the memories that came over her. The girl did not understand why in all her memories she mocks people. In any case, she laughed cheerfully, saying that it was just a joke. The girl admitted that Marion's reaction was so funny. Like any main character, Tezric hates the villainous Shelia, but the girl had no idea that Shelia did not like Tezric either. The girl never thought that she would sympathize with Shelia, but whether Eclet is a man or not, she has always disliked characters who despise everyone and are only kind to their lover. The girl decided that she needed to finish all this as soon as possible. She asked the maid where her fiancé was now. Tesric Roitanier is the pride of the empire and the genius of the knightly order. They say that he helped the goddess found an empire, the eldest son of the Roitanier family, recognized by the five major families, the man who was destined for Eclet. Therefore, he is the main character of this short story. But the main detail is that this man is in a political marriage with the princess. The girl's role as a villain was that once Tesric and Eclet fell in love, she would burn with envy and hatred of Eclet constantly harass her, and then die. The ball was just wonderful. The woman turned her attention to the dancing lady and her partner. She heard that the appearance of the illegitimate son of the Marquis Baruch was admired. She also noted that the princess looked terribly lonely. Despite the beauty of the princess, her fiancé, Lord Tesric, is absolutely indifferent to her. Suddenly, there was a murmur in the hall. People were surprised to see Lord Tesric at the ball. Everyone was surprised because Lord Tesric had not attended the ball before. No one understood who the lady was with him, especially considering that the princess was here too. It turns out the rumors were true, rumors that the princess was abandoned. Lord Tesric was not even interested in this, but even more unholy rumors were circulating about the princess. There are rumors that she does not belong to the descendants of the goddess. After this incident, Shalia decided to kill Eclet. The girl found this strange. If she was going to kill someone, shouldn't it be Tesric? Why innocent Eclet? However, this had nothing to do with the girl. Whatever the circumstances, she had no intention of harming Eclet. Moreover, what a ball. She didn't even know how to dance. The girl had no idea why preparations for the wedding began at this particular moment in history. She realized that it was too dangerous for her to get involved with the main character of the story. Having finished, the princess immediately ordered Marion to send a letter. With this, their engagement will definitely be broken. The girl wished Eclet happiness. She was going to save money and leave the castle. The butler asked the young gentleman what happened. 
he decided that the princess had asked for another impossible request. The guy assured that it was nothing, and he didn't have to worry. Tezric did not understand what was happening to this girl. He noted that his attention-getting skills are getting better every day. The guy ordered the old man to immediately prepare everything to send a letter to Delphinium Castle. The butler did not understand why so suddenly. Tezric reported that the lady had so bravely resisted him. As a gentleman, it would be rude for him to ignore her challenge. The maids were already loudly discussing rumors that the princess was going to break off the engagement. Anna noted that she is not the only one who wants to cancel it. The maid warned Anna that if she spoke like that, her tongue would be cut out instead of her hair. The girl noted that the princess seemed to have calmed down in recent days, so it was unlikely that she would need her tongue. The girl who arrived sternly ordered Anna and Susan to stop chatting and move quickly. She noted that they could continue this conversation in the bedroom. The girls immediately apologized. The maid told the princess that it was time to return to the castle. After all, she has a meeting with Lord Tezric soon. The princess was sure that he could wait a little. The girl had no idea what he wanted to say, because he himself asked her to meet. Having apologized, the maid hesitantly asked the princess why she wanted to break off her engagement to the lord, because she had always wanted to marry him. The girl understood that she could not say that she had suddenly become a different person. The princess said that one day she opened her eyes and realized that she was wasting her time on him. The maid admitted that she had expected this. She felt it wouldn't last too long. Moreover, the lord treated the princess too coldly. The girl decided that she was too good for the lord. Suddenly, a noise was heard nearby. Turning her head, the princess was surprised to see Tezric Roitanier. He was glad that he was able to find a girl. The guy was sure that the princess wrote about her visit. He admitted that he had been looking for her for a long time. The princess noted that before doing so, the lord should greet her in accordance with the proper rules of etiquette. The girl asked if she should remind their boyfriend. Lord admitted he made a mistake. Bowing, he greeted her royal highness, Princess Shelia, wishing her the blessings of the goddess Isonia. Now that all decorum had been observed, the princess asked what Tezric had to do with her. The guy didn't understand what was wrong with this girl. Tezric admitted that the princess's request for an annulment was rather unexpected. He asked what all this was about. The guy decided that the princess was going to give him a gift. The girl could not believe that Tezric interpreted the termination of the engagement in his own interests. Besides, she didn't understand how a guy could be so arrogant. Is it really that great to be a main character? The princess decided to explain it again, in case Tezric did not understand her. The annulment was not a joke. She sincerely hoped for it. In any case, they both did not want this engagement, so the girl decided that they had nothing to regret and proposed to go their separate ways. Tezric admitted that he was surprised. Not to say he wasn't interested, it's just that the girl always took it so seriously. She admitted that Shelia did treat the Lord as a tool in the novella. Now that this could not be changed, the girl had no choice. The princess noted that she had always been a faithful bride, unlike some. But she admitted that even that has changed now. The girl said that she found someone she really loves, so now the guy is free. The girl was glad that she finally said it. Now she was free. Tezric said that then he would also begin preparations for the wedding. The princess did not understand what he was talking about. The girl recalled that she had just said that there was a person she loved. Tezric recalled that the purpose of their engagement, first of all, was to unite their families, so it would be difficult to find a partner with better conditions than theirs. The princess repeated again that she had found a person for whom she was ready to give up all this. She didn't understand what was happening. The girl didn't want to believe that this was one of those you're the first woman to treat me like this cliches that they were approaching. The girl realized that the main character could not even think that he would be abandoned by the villainous. Or is Tesseric special? She decided that the guy needed more confidence to be the main character. But he and Eklat will still be together. The girl suggested that probably everything would fall into place when his destiny appeared. In the meantime, you can maintain the engagement, as it was in the novel. The princess noted that Tezric must not know about this, since he did not care, but she had recently fainted. Since then, her health has deteriorated. The girl admitted that if she overexerts herself, she begins to feel that she could lose consciousness at any moment. The princess noted that this did not bode well for them. She asked to suspend preparations for the upcoming wedding until she said she was completely healthy. 
The princess noted that, in any case, she was the only one preparing for the wedding, so she was sure that the Lord would not have any problems. Calling Marion, the princess said that the guest was already leaving and asked to accompany him. Having met the young master, the butler offered to take him to the carriage, asking whether the meeting went without problems. Tezric suggested we go inside before speaking. He was shocked that he was rejected the first time. The girl was worried whether she had sent him away too early. After all, he is the main character. But she simply couldn't stay with him any longer. Luck simply wasn't on her side. Even though she is a villain, Shalia did everything she could while she was a bride. And she gave Tezric so much. Remember even the necklace in the novella? The necklace was passed down as something left by the goddess, the necklace of Isonia. This long-lost artifact was found by Shelia. After overcoming various difficulties, she handed it over to Tesric, only for the sake of him giving it to Eclet. It is ironic that the necklace that came to Eclet in this way, deflecting Shelia's blade, would protect her in the future. The girl did not understand how she could give away the gift she received so easily. Just the thought of it made her angry. The butler noted that the princess's whims are difficult to understand. He remarked that this is a wedding that the young master doesn't want, so why shouldn't he agree to annul it? But it was all about ability, and the desire to prove something. Even if the girl had no intention of attacking Eclet in the future, when she saved the dying emperor, she would need the necklace to attract his attention. The girl had to find him before Eclet no matter how. But the girl did not want to attract attention, she wanted to live a quiet life. After thinking a little, she remembered that there was a person powerful and talented enough to find this artifact. In the novella, he fought just as hard as Shelia. Thus, as a knight of the empire and the groom of a princess, if you prove your abilities by finding the lost treasure of the imperial family, I think I will have the strength to solve our problems. From Shelia, after reading the letter again, Tezric said that this was not enough to deceive him, he decided to see what excuse the princess would come up with this time. The princess said that today was fine weather for a walk. The maid invited her to go along. The girl noted that she has everything in this life, and breaking off their engagement was the best thing. The girl looked around in confusion. The maid was not around. She realized that she was lost. The girl did not know which way to go to return to the castle. She suggested that if this was castle territory, then it shouldn't be dangerous. Approaching some kind of stone structure, the girl did not understand what the hell it was and why it was in the forest. The princess did not understand what this place was. Looking inside, she didn't see anything suspicious, deciding that everything would be fine if she looked around here a little. The structure looked like an ancient temple. The girl felt like she was going on vacation abroad. It's not like she's been anywhere before. She wondered where this would take her. Walking along a long corridor, the girl felt a bright light hit her eyes. Having gotten used to it a little, she was able to see the place where she found herself. The girl took her breath away from what she saw. It was incredibly beautiful here. It looked as if the princess was looking at a painting. Reaching out her hand and touching the soft petals, the girl asked how they fly. She decided that this was truly a fantastic world. Looking around, the girl was surprised to find a stranger snoring peacefully in the shade of a tree. She had blue hair. If Shalia's memories were correct, then this was St. Gabriel. The girl didn't understand why she didn't notice her right away. She must have let her guard down after saying goodbye to Tesric. Gabriel, saint and head of the temple serving the goddess. Gibrielle was the one most involved in Shalia's death. She was Eclet's strongest ally. Although she is a saint, she is not for Eclet's enemies. Gabriel admitted that it was unfortunate that Princess Shalia did not bow her head until the very end. She then corrected herself, admitting that the girl was no longer a princess, but an imposter. Gritting her teeth, the princess asked who the woman called an imposter. She assured that this was all slander. The girl asked Gibriel if she thought she would live in peace after what he did to her. The woman ordered Shalia to be taken away, noting that Acklet would judge her. No, Lady Acklet will be the one who decides everything. Shelia tried to break free, but it was all in vain. Gibriel ordered not to let her die when they torture her. The girl trembled from the rush of memories, immediately rushing to run towards the temple. Meeting Gibriel will not bring her anything good. Her very existence was unacceptable for a woman. Just think, there are so many dangers waiting for her in the castle. 
The girl thought that even if she changes, will someone be on her side? The maid appeared and called out to the princess in concern. The maid was very happy to see the girl alive and unharmed. She worriedly asked the princess if everything was okay with her. She smiled happily and assured that everything was fine with her. The woman offered her sincere apologies to her highness. She never thought that a trained maid would lose sight of her princess. She was worried that something might happen. Smiling tenderly, the princess once again assured everyone that everything was fine and nothing had happened. Wiping away the tears that fell, the maid admitted that their princess was so kind. Anna didn't understand what all the fuss was about. Marion explained that the princess got lost while walking in the western forest. The girl noted that there was nothing dangerous in the palace. Smiling a radiant smile, the princess apologized for causing everyone to worry. Marion did not understand how the princess could change so much. Anna was also surprised by this. Marion noted that, regarding the rumors, the court magicians released monsters into the forest which turned out unsuccessfully, and the temple buried the damned rulers there. She also added that ghosts have been seen there. The princess decided that these were definitely false legends. Anna admitted that her mother said that the previous saint and the ghost of the western lake. The woman stopped her before the girl could finish. The woman apologized to the princess. The girl was surprised that the story of the disappearance of the previous saint turned into such a rumor. She tried to remember her name. There is almost nothing recorded about her, although she is still an important figure. This saint was Mother Eclet. The saint fell in love with the previous emperor as if it were destined to happen. Soon she became pregnant, but this was strictly prohibited in the temple. The woman received a prophecy that she would lose Eclet if she remained in the castle. In the end, she fled to some village, gave birth in a small monastery, and died. There Eclet was raised as an orphan. This was the secret of Eclet's birth in the novella. The previous ruler went mad because the saint abandoned him and his younger brother, the current emperor, ascended the throne. Either way, Eclet has holy magic and royal blood, making her the perfect heroine. So Eclet and Shelia are actually cousins. For Shelia, Eclet was like an eyesore because she took everything that belonged to her. This turned Shelia into a villain, but the girl did not intend to live like that. After leaving Tesseric and meeting Jibriel, the girl finally left this game. She decided that she urgently needed to earn a lot of money and leave the castle. The princess asked Marion for a favor. Gibriel stood, enthusiastically examining the fountain, not paying any attention to the man who appeared behind her. Only when the girl spoke did Gibriel pay attention to Lopi, glad that she had come. Lopi asked what about this, why Gibriel called her. The woman admitted that she would first like to thank her, because thanks to Lapi, they learned that the main heir to the empire was not of imperial blood. The woman noted that the temple could not ignore such news, and suggested that the girl now move on to the main thing. The girl said that it was not customary for just the two of them to leave the palace. The princess could not understand why. The maid noted that this was dangerous, because just recently the girl got lost while walking around the palace grounds. The maid said that if the princess wants to take a walk, then she needs to send an official request to the main palace and take knights with her to accompany her. Even though this is the capital, the castle's leadership does not monitor every nook and cranny, so you need to be careful. The princess admitted to Marion that she really wanted them to play together. She was just curious, because she didn't remember anything about the capital. The girl really asked that they go just the two of them. The girl exhaled in delight, looking at everything around her. Marion trudged along sullenly. There was a bustle all around. People were rushing about their business, and there was noise all around. The girl could not believe that she got out of the palace so easily. She believed that even if something happened in the future, there would be no problem. The girl decided that Marion was simply the best. The girl kept urging Marion on. The maid asked the princess, or rather her lady, not to rush, trying to keep up with the girl. Captivated by the city, the princess did not notice the man watching her at all. Marion said that she took the girl to the largest street, as she had asked. But the maid noted that it was too crowded here and suggested that we still go back. The princess assured the maid that everything was fine and she need not worry. The girl decided that in order to find out how people live here, she needed to explore the market. If you don't get distracted by other things, the landscape isn't so different from what she imagined. The girl was attracted by the conversation of two women. They talked about what everyone was going crazy about. They said that she makes her hair red. 
another woman noted that there are many different methods for hair dye. One of them admitted that she had heard that three drops are enough to make your hair fiery red for a month. Another was very surprised by this and pointed out this crazy price. The women decided to leave because they did not see the point in this. They were not even members of the imperial family. The girl remembered that in the novella, the red hair and golden eyes of the goddess are objects of worship. She assumed it was the influence of the goddess herself when she descended to found the empire. Many members of the imperial family were born with golden eyes. However, after many generations, this feature gradually disappeared. There are only notes left about this. As a result, Eklat is the first in several hundred years to have these features. An ideal heiress who can prove that the imperial family truly belongs to the descendants of the goddess. There have been cases where people have been persecuted just because of their hair color. Only because it was strange at the time. In any case, the girl thought that red hair was quite common these days. Even in the palace there is a red-haired maid. In this world, the only person with golden eyes will definitely be the main hero. Unexpectedly, Marion noted that since they were already here, they could properly look around. The maid asked the princess if there was some place she wanted to visit. The girl beamed with joy. After some time, the princess reported that she was tired. Marion noted that she should have been allowed to carry her on her back. The girl was surprised that she was in such a state after a walk. This body turned out to be weaker than she imagined. The girl decided that she needed to train her endurance. Marion suggested finishing for today and returning to the palace. She asked the princess to sit on the bench and rest while she informed the carriage to pick them up. The capital turned out to be much larger than the girl could have imagined. She decided that maybe she shouldn't have gone that far. As expected, the only thing she needed was more money. Suddenly, the princess heard the heart-rending cry of a little boy. He asked for help because her grandmother had fallen in an alley, but there was no one nearby. The girl immediately asked where she was, and the guy pointed down the road. The girl was in a hurry as fast as she could, but looking into the alley, she saw only two men. They abruptly pulled the brat towards themselves, noting that he had done a good job, and this was the third one that day. The man promised that he would give him his share later. The girl was surprised that she had been fooled, and such a small boy too. The men assured that they were not bad people, so Miss need not worry. They noted that she looked like she came from a wealthy family. The men asked the girl to take pity on people like them. They noted that it would be nice if she took off her clothes. It seems like it cost a lot of money. The girl realized that this child was not to blame for anything. The problem was his exploitation by adults. Whether in a novel or in life, exploitation of the weak exists everywhere. Usually in such a situation, the main character passing by would have already saved the girl, but she is just a villain. The girl was sad about her life. She decided that if she returned, she would immediately begin training her endurance. Suddenly, the boy spoke up, saying that the men had never given him anything. The men did not even immediately understand what he said. The boy continued by saying that they promised to give him money if he brought people, but they never kept their promise. They just gave him the rest of the bread. The man didn't understand why this ignorant child was talking so much today. He wanted to grab him by the scruff of the neck but only threw off his hood. The girl was surprised to notice that the boy had blonde hair and red eyes. The girl froze in surprise. She was sure she had seen this somewhere before. At this moment, the girl spoke again. A girl named Shalia, worst villain. The princess sternly asked why he was hesitating, because she was sure that she had given the order. Looking at the boy, she noted how disgusting he was. She ordered him to be killed. The girl couldn't believe that this was a script from a novel, first appearance of Shalia, and this child is a minor character whom Shelia ordered to be killed. She didn't understand why this was already happening. The dead zone is where the demons fled after the goddess cast them out. Soon it became a place of exile for sinners and there were people who were able to get along in this hellish place. They had white hair and red eyes and were called crowns. Although they were few in number, many despised them. The only crown that appears in the novel is the child killed by Shelia. I think it happened during the flower festival. This was after Eclet arrived in the capital. The girl was going to run away before this happened. The girl decided that this meant that running away would not help her, and she would definitely meet everyone with whom fate had destined her. This way, she will meet Eclet too. The girl decided to think carefully. It would be simply impossible for her to escape with such a body, and she didn't understand what to do with this child. Perhaps moving away from him would be the best option. 
Suddenly, one of the men shouted at the girl to stop ignoring them and asked if she was going to give them anything. The girl asked with all her might that Marion hurry up. Miss Grace stopped Anna and Susan, sternly noting that she had not seen Marion or the princess all day. The girl had to admit that Marion accompanied the princess all alone, and they went outside the palace, noting that the princess continued to beg. Grace assured that Marion would not have gone outside the castle without any preparation. Suddenly, the maid appeared behind the princess, humbly apologizing for being late. The men did not understand where she came from, but then they decided that it didn't matter and ordered her to give away everything valuable that she had. Marion only calmly reported that preparations for the princess's return had been completed. The girl noticed many armed soldiers surrounding the alley on all sides. The men froze in surprise, not knowing what to do. Marion asked the princess what her orders would be. The men did not understand why so many people appeared so suddenly. The princess ordered her people to force them to kneel. The men had no choice but to obey. One of the soldiers was disappointed that vibrant young men were making a living by extorting valuables from innocent people. The men admitted that they were very sorry, but he noted that they would be the ones telling the police. Although the soldier noticed that they were both elderly, the men immediately objected, admitting that they were only 20. The soldier ordered that false statements be added to the list of charges. The soldier asked the princess what they should do with this thing, or rather with this child. According to investigators, he lied about having a family. And it's not like this child has a home to return to. The soldier apologized admitting that he was seeing the crown for the first time. He said that for now they would take him along with the rest of the criminals. The girl realized that this was all driving her crazy. The girl stared at the guy, not understanding what to do with him. This child was added into the plot only for Shelia to kill him. Now murder, of course, is out of the question. The girl simply couldn't leave him there, so she took him with her. The girl decided that she needed to think it over carefully. The boy asked her highness where they were. He assumed that he would now be taken to prison and die. The girl immediately rushed to assure him that she was not that kind of person, and no one would kill him. Of course, she noted that what he did was bad, but the princess knew that he had no choice. First of all, the princess asked what his name was. The boy introduced himself as Riven and admitted that he did not know his last name. The girl remembered that his name appeared only in a few lines, but even this child has a name. The girl introduced herself as Shalia. She wanted to tell him that she was a princess, but then decided that it could wait. Deciding that the boy was probably hungry, the princess offered to bathe and feed him first. The princess asked Anna for help. When the door closed behind the boy and the maid, the girl sat down to think about what she should do next. This child is a minor character who should have died as soon as he met her. The girl thought that perhaps she was using this to see if the character could deviate from the plot, but suddenly, she thought that the child would suddenly die. If a corpse is removed from her castle, everything will happen the same as in the novel, if it turns out that she killed a person. The girl immediately drove away these thoughts. They involuntarily shuddered when Marion appeared and offered her food. Suddenly, a loud scream was heard. Realizing that it was Anna, the princess was very frightened and immediately rushed to her. Sharply opening the doors, she anxiously asked what had happened. Anna was also surprised to see the princess. She said that the whole point is that he became bigger. This child suddenly grew up. Marion, who appeared, was also shocked by what she saw. The maids were shocked that the princess wanted to leave the crown in the palace. The girl did not see any problem in this. It just meant that there would be another child living here. The maid noted that the boy was not an ordinary child. He is a cursed creature. The girl had no doubt that he would harm the princess. It's good that there is magic installed around the palace, which does not allow disguised people to enter. Thanks to this magic, they learned that he was not a child. The maid couldn't believe that Krona used magic. How dare he? She noted that it would be better if they allowed the knightly order to capture him. The maid was afraid that because of him, the princess would get involved in a scandal. The girl noted that his real self also looks quite young. She just picked up a homeless child. She didn't understand why it was considered something provocative rather than a touching story. This means that the crown's reputation is worse than the girl imagined. The maid said that Marion should also try to convince the princess. Marion admitted that she did not think that this child had evil intentions regarding the princess. The girl hoped that Grace would accept all of Her Highness's wishes. 
The girl also added that looking at the changed princess, she expected her to say this. The girl suddenly remembered that Marion had also been recruited by Gretel, Shelia's mother, at a young age. When Gretel entered the palace, Marion accompanied her. That's why she feels protected from Riven. The princess said that, in any case, she had already decided what to do. Gray wondered if it was necessary to ask about the wishes of the crown itself. Maybe they don't want it. The princess assured that it did not matter. After all, she did him a great honor and he would not dare refuse. Grace continued to mutter something under her breath, trying to persuade the princess, but she was interrupted by Susan entering. The girl said that the crown, or rather, their guest had already woken up. The guy didn't understand where he was. He noted that the blanket was so soft. Suddenly, looking at his hand, Riven was surprised. He didn't believe that he was finally back and wondered if he was the same forever. The guy flinched when he heard the sound of the door opening. The princess timidly asked if she could come in. Marion ordered the guy to get up and show honor because Princess Eden Rose Shelia had come to him. The girl asked if he slept well. Riven was extremely surprised by the appearance of the princess. The guy immediately apologized and said that he would leave the palace right away. The girl assured that this was not necessary. The princess asked where he would go if he left. She noted that from that moment he could not leave her. Both the guy and Marion were shocked by this information. Sitting down near the bed, the princess said that, since this happened, she wanted the guy to become her servant. Riven noted that he was a crown. The girl assured that she did not care, but she would like to check something. The princess asked how he turned into a child. She decided that the guy knew how to use magic. Riven immediately rushed to assure her that this was not so and that he was ordinary. In the past, when he was at the slave market, a girl taught him a spell. She said if Riven remained a disgusting child, then they wouldn't kill him and he could escape. But then this spell did not disappear. When she heard about the slave market, the girl was surprised. She didn't remember anything like this in the novella. The princess asked what happened to that girl. Riven admitted that he thought she was dead. The girl decided that the slave market was not the problem. She can decide now. The princess assured the guy that he didn't have to worry anymore. Now he was under her protection. In the novella, he was just a minor, minor character, but that is no longer the case. The girl knew the fates of all the people around her, and Riven could prevent his future death. And she will do everything for this. The girl decided that since this happened, she should take care of Riven like in Princess Maker, simulation game. Who knows, maybe he will turn out to be an important person. At the very least, if she wasn't here in the future, the girl had to make sure that Riven had a place where he could stay. The princess suggested continuing the discussion after lunch. The princess said that after lunch, she would introduce the guy to her family. She noted that even if they act rude and cold, they are all good people. The girl asked Riven if anything hurt him. The girl still called the doctor to examine the guy. They needed to check if there was any other strange spell on him. The guy admitted that nothing hurt him. The guy awkwardly admitted that he thought about it a lot, and the whole point is that he doesn't know how to do anything. He is grateful to the princess, but... Riven was unable to finish. The chandelier hanging on the ceiling suddenly fell down. The girl saw only blood splashes on the floor. The princess managed to react at the last second, pushing the guy away and falling on top of him. Rising up, the girl asked if he was okay and not wounded anywhere. Riven noted that it was not him that the princess should worry about. Her leg was covered in blood. The girl assured that it was just a scratch, and there was nothing to worry about. She was fine. The princess asked where her shoe was. Suddenly, she felt dizzy. The very next moment, the princess lost consciousness, falling straight into the guy's arms. Having combed her hair, the maid said that everything was ready and asked the princess what she thought. The girl admitted that such thoughts sometimes crossed her mind when she became Shalia. But what happened to her real body? Is it dead? If it didn't die, what would happen if the girl died here as Shalia? She kept wondering if she could return to her real body. If so, the girl hoped she would die as Shalia. The girl heard the distant murmur of the maids. They assured that the girl should have woken up and asked if everything was okay with her. As soon as the girl opened her eyes, Marion immediately ordered to quickly call Mason and report that the princess had woken up. The girl thought that if she died here, then at least there would be people who would be upset. The doctor said that fortunately there were no consequences. The princess fainted from painful shock, but the doctor added that unfortunately, 
the girl would have a large scar on her leg. The doctor was relieved that the injury was not on the face, but he was worried that the scar would become a problem in the future when the princess got married. However, he assured that the girl need not worry. He is Mason, after all. Marion decided that Mason was joking. She did not understand how he dared to speak so thoughtlessly about the princess. He doesn't care about his life at all. The doctor said that out of respect for the princess, he was making an impartial and rational conclusion. Looking at the scar, the girl admitted that from the very beginning it was not her body. So she regrets. However, she managed to save her life, so it was a small price to pay. Suddenly she wondered what happened to Riven. The princess asked Marion where Riven was. Having released Mason, whom she almost strangled, the maid reported that he was in an underground prison. The girl was shocked. She assured that the guy did nothing. Mason noted that although this was true, if not for this crown, the princess would not have been harmed. He assured that the death of the crown was better than the injury of a member of the royal family. Whether intentional or not, harming a member of the royal family is a huge crime. The man also noted that, in addition, a chandelier from the imperial palace, which has a centuries-old history, just suddenly fell. The man thought about what if the rumors that crowns bring bad luck were true. The princess did not understand where his impartiality and rationality had gone. The princess noted that it did not matter and ordered Riven to be called here now, unless, of course, they wanted her to go to prison with her injured leg. The princess noted that she was impartial and rational, and therefore had to make sure that Riven paid for saving her and her injured leg. She asked if anyone had any objections. There were no objections. Riven stood in front of the door, still not daring to go inside. The princess was seriously injured. He thought that he would be punished immediately and did not understand why she called him. The guy decided that the princess might be angry with him. Seeing the guy, Marion noted that he should hurry up because the princess was already waiting for him. Startled in surprise, Riven just nodded and finally opened the door. The princess was very happy to see the guy. She admitted that she did not know that he had been sent to prison. The girl apologized for not freeing Riven earlier. The guy asked if everything was okay with the princess. She replied that she was told that it was just a sprain. So she ordered Riven to stay by her side until her leg healed and help her run some errands. Riven recalled that the girl was injured because of him. The princess did not understand why he blamed himself. It was an accident. The girl did not believe that the guy was so heartless that he would abandon a wounded man and simply run away. The girl admitted that she would be angry if the guy refused. Riven admitted that as long as she allows, he will be glad to stay next to the princess. Marion said that she had prepared a room for Riven on the sunny side, as the princess had ordered. The maid noted that the guy didn't seem to know how to write. The girl assumed so. Marion and the others are busy with their work, so the girl decided that it would be wrong to ask her to teach Riven to read and write. She thought about entrusting this to Mason, but then changed her mind, deciding that for now it was better to teach him herself. From that moment on, the girl needed to save money and teach Riven. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. A guy entered the room. He apologized, admitting that Miss Grace had told him to come and greet the princess first. The princess noted that the new clothes suit Riven incredibly. The guy embarrassedly thanked her. The girl asked the guy to take care of her from now on. Rumors immediately spread throughout the palace. The servants discussed that the princess had brought the crown to the palace and was treating him well. One of the girls asked if crowns could bewitch people. Having learned that it was a man, the girl asked if this meant that the princess would break off her engagement to Sir Tesseric. Another maid ordered her to be quiet, because she might be heard. But rumors had already spread throughout the palace. In any case, the girl could not believe that it was a crown. She hoped nothing bad would happen. Putting down the cup and sighing heavily, Tesseric decided that this would drive him crazy. Tesseric did not understand where these rumors came from. Why would he be worried about a broken engagement? Moreover, they did not cancel the engagement, but simply postponed it a little. Tesseric suddenly remembered how the princess said that she had found the person she loved. He couldn't believe his guess. The guy immediately took off. The butler was concerned about his behavior. He didn't understand where the young master was in such a hurry. The princess was surprised to hear that Tesric had arrived. She didn't understand what he was doing here early in the morning. The maid asked what the princess intended to do. After examining herself in the mirror, the princess said that she thought that there was nothing on her neck yet. 
she assumed that Tezric had not come empty-handed. The maid conveyed the princess's words to Tezric. The guy was unhappy that he was served tea and was refused. He admitted that he had only one question for the princess. Suddenly, Tezric froze. He decided that he still had his honor, and even though he was still thinking about this situation, it was not respectful. But he didn't come here just to drink tea. Suddenly, a loud sound was heard. Tesric hastened to assure the maid that he had placed the cup down very carefully, and that the sound was not his doing. The girl apologized, saying that it was most likely something that happened in the kitchen. Tesric suggested that he thought he should return to his place today. He noted that, unfortunately, he had no free time. Looking out the window, the Lord was surprised to see a guy with white hair. Tesric decided that this could not be true. Was this really the same crown from the rumors? Not seeing the Lord, the guy calmly went on about his business. Having risen, Tesric announced that he was already leaving. Seeing the red eyes, Tesric did not believe that it was real. He couldn't believe that the princess had actually let the crown in. He wondered how true the rumors were. The guy believed that things were going in the wrong direction. The woman was furious. She did not understand what it was. She asked if the exploding vat had any meaning for the girl. She decided that she had deliberately mixed the explosives. The girl assured that she followed the recipe. Entering the kitchen, the guy apologized, saying that he had already finished all the tasks that had been assigned to him, and asked if there was anything else for him. Anna was surprised that Riven had already finished everything. Anna said that's enough for today. It's time for school, so the guy should hurry up. Riven immediately announced that he would go then. Susan asked the girl if everything was okay with this situation. Anna didn't quite understand what she meant. The girl explained that after Riven appeared here, strange things began to happen. The durable dishes suddenly began to break, the new broom broke, and the explosion that had just occurred. Anna was sure that there was nothing like that. The vat may explode during cooking. Susan assured the girl that this was not normal. Anna noted that it didn't seem like Riven was the one who caused the vat to explode. And they could not do anything, since this was the order of the princess. Susan decided that these seemed to be bad omens. Grace immediately sternly ordered the two of them to get back to work. Knocking on the door, the guy said it was Riven. The princess immediately allowed him to enter, asking if he was tired after today's work. Riven assured that not at all. The princess wondered whether she would be able to train him properly, but unexpectedly, Riven's learning process proceeded smoothly. The girl noted that he seemed smarter than her younger brother. The princess did not at all expect that Riven would ask her to teach her how to write her name instead of hers. Touching the guy's palm, the girl stopped him, noting that his hands were too tense when he wrote. The girl decided that the rumors that surround Riven may be bad, but they will disappear with time. It was too early for her to do anything about them, so she had to just watch and wait. The door suddenly opened. The princess was very surprised to notice Marion entering. The maid apologized for the disturbance, saying that an important letter had arrived. Marion noted that Riven's handwriting was like a worm. It was so sweet. Looking at the letter, the girl saw that it was from Edith Magnolia. She is Shelia's aunt and the one who supported her before this. The princess did not understand why she suddenly contacted her. The letter said that the woman had heard that the girl was no longer bedridden, but she noted that now was an important time for the healing of his body and heart. Hearing that the princess would remain in this stuffy castle, her heart sank. The woman offered to spend the summer on her estate. Olivia's summer was much cooler than the capital's. She suggested thinking of it as a short vacation and a chance to talk about the princess's debut. Marion reported that Edith also prepared a gondola, which the princess used when she was younger. As expected, Lady Edith was very prudent. Marion advised the girl to immediately answer that she would come. The girl admitted that this was true. Edith was one of the few who supported Shelia in the affair, but she decided that this person would not be enough. Edith wondered if Shelia would really sit and do nothing while this red-haired girl took everything from her. Her fiancé, her younger brother, her place. The woman asked Shay to trust her, her aunt. She was sure that this girl and the emperor were in cahoots. She warned that if the girl was going to kill them, she must do it carefully. In this novella, excluding Shelia, the villain, Edith is the worst person. The girl didn't really want to meet her, but she probably had something to hide, so coming and keeping an eye on her wouldn't hurt. The princess suggested that Riven take a gondola ride before it gets even warmer. Having hit a clet hard in the face, 
The woman asked if she really didn't know who she was. The woman ordered Aklet to tell her what she did wrong. Aklet assured her mother that this was not the case. She admitted that she was not yet ready to go out into society. She still had a lot to learn about etiquette and manners. To suddenly receive an invitation from such an important person was a surprise for her. The woman stated that this was not a problem. All Aklet had to do was be quiet and talk like her. The woman asked if the girl understood who sent this invitation. This is Madame Magnolia herself, a woman who is called the Queen of High Society. The woman asked if the girl thought that such an opportunity appeared often. And this was also a great chance to find Eklet a groom. The woman said this for the good of the girl, but she dared to contradict the woman. Eklet admitted that she was very sorry. The woman advised Eklet to start getting ready if she really understood her. The girl obediently agreed, feeling hot tears begin to run down her cheeks. The girl was surprised that Marion asked a whole detachment of knights to accompany them on the trip. She decided that the maid was not serious. Marion noted that Olivis was quite far from here. Marion noted that they should be prepared for anything, asking Riven's opinion. The princess assured that it was not necessary, adding that traveling with such a crowd would attract unnecessary attention. This will only create unnecessary rumors that some important person is traveling. The purpose of their trip was rest and relaxation, so the girl suggested going quietly and without unnecessary fuss. Marion agreed to do so, asking Riven to help her prepare everything for the upcoming tea party. Despite what she said, when the girl thought about her situation, she believed that it was all the result of Marion's anxiety. A small palace in a godforsaken place, without a single visitor, as few servants as possible. The emperor who never came to see his princess, even after she overcame her illness. The princess could disappear, but the emperor still would not start looking for her. She was not his blood daughter, so the girl could understand. But still, she believed that this was the best way. She shouldn't feel uncomfortable because the emperor is nearby. The girl just wanted to avoid unnecessary noise, calmly meet with Edith and return home. Grace assured the princess that they would look after the palace in her absence. They wished the girl a safe trip. The girl was wondering what Edith Magnolia was like outside of this story. Did she really call the princess to help with her recovery? The girl decided that she would soon find out. Arriving at the right place, the girl was surprised by the scale of the estate. So this is where Edith Magnolia lived. The elderly woman bowed to greet the princess and said that their mistress was already waiting for her. The woman was surprised to see Shelia. She didn't even recognize her right away, noting that the girl had grown so much. Looking at the woman, the girl realized that it was her Aunt Edith Magnolia. The woman noted that if the princess needed something, she could ask without hesitation. And of course, they will still catch up. But first the woman wanted to show her the room in which the girl would live. Looking at the fair-haired guy accompanying the princess, Edith admitted that he was so handsome. She asked the guy if there was something between him and her niece. Riven immediately hastened to assure that it was not at all. The girl decided that Edith was going to exhaust her in these three days, but no matter how you look at it, she simply couldn't see the woman as a villain. Stopping near the massive door, the woman said that they had arrived and this was the room where the princess would stay. Marion immediately recognized these chambers. Edith confirmed that this was her older sister's room. This was once Shelia's mother's room. Suddenly, the woman came to her senses, remembering that she had prepared a special event for Shelia. The girl did not understand what to expect. The butler asked if he could see Madame's invitation. She immediately handed it to him. The man noted that the invitation was addressed to only one person, Eclat Blanche. The woman immediately apologized for this. She admitted that her daughter simply refused to go until she agreed to accompany her. Aklet immediately admitted that this was true. The butler indicated that they were coming here and asked the madam what they should do with their luggage. The woman admitted that her son was sleeping in the carriage, so she asked them to be quiet. Riven became worried when he noticed the princess's worried face. Smiling, Edith reminded her that as she had said, she had prepared a special event for the girl. Looking out the window, the girl noticed that the stranger had red hair, and they must have been about the same age. She had no idea that there were other guests here besides her. Having met the stranger's gaze, the girl immediately retreated from the window, hiding behind the wall. She didn't understand why she was hiding. Her body reacted on its own. Riven was surprised by her behavior. 
The woman admitted that just a moment ago, she was going to keep it a secret. The princess did not quite understand what she was talking about, and Edith reminded her of the special event. The woman admitted that she just wanted Shelia to find friends. Turning sharply, the princess said that she was glad to see her aunt, but now she was going to return. Edith asked where she was going. The princess asked who the girl she saw was. Edith corrected that it was not a girl, but girls. She noted that as they say the more people, the merrier. The princess was worried that Aunt Edith would send her secretly to such an event. The woman assured that this would be a good opportunity for Shalia. She noted that just because of one invitation, all these girls came here. Not only for the sake of their families, but also for the sake of their own ambitions. They have already announced their participation in this fight in order to make their debut in society. The woman noted that you never know. Perhaps among them, there will be a girl who is ready to die for the princess. The girl realized that all this was not so that they could make new friends. She had to choose a piece for her chessboard. Edith suggested discussing all the details later. Plopping down on the bed, the girl realized how tired she was. It seems Edith Magnolia will do anything to help Shalia strengthen her position. But who knows what she really thinks about. The girl believed that this trip was intended for relaxation and did not understand why it suddenly turned into a gathering of high society. The girl did not understand what kind of jokes she was making with her friends. This whole relationship will end the second she leaves the palace. Looking at the portrait of a beautiful woman, the girl remembered that this was Shelia's mother, and that this had once been her room. Having examined the portrait better, the girl noted that they were completely different. The girl decided that if Shelia was at least a little like her mother, the emperor probably showed at least some feelings for her. After thinking about it a little, she decided that it was not the child's fault. The girl ordered herself to just somehow survive tomorrow's meeting. The woman assured that she should not worry, just enjoy the meeting. It's just time to drink tea and chat. New friends or not, the girl could not guarantee that she would find a common language with someone. The woman assured that, of course, she would not be to blame. They are the ones who must live up to princess standards. Edith noted that in this house, only she and the girl knew her true identity. Besides, her dear niece had never been sociable. The woman noted that a girl can choose to tell these girls who she is or not, but Edith noted that it might be easier to find trusted people who didn't know this. The girl also decided that it was better this way, less outside pressure. River wished the princess a good evening and warned her to be careful. The girl assured him that he should not worry. She was going to win this evening. Marion asked anxiously if the princess was going to fight with someone that evening. Edith had prepared this meeting for her, so the girl decided that she could not miss it. The girl was only going to quickly show herself to people and leave. Walking inside the room, she immediately caught many appraising glances. A little confused, the girl decided that she needed to introduce herself. The girl noted that they were all about the same age as Jay He. She wondered what girls of that age usually talk about when they meet. Suddenly, a girl grabbed Shelia by the hand, noting that she had not seen her on the first day and asked when she arrived. Another noted that it doesn't matter. She didn't understand why they were here and suggested they just drink tea. The girl was surprised by the atmosphere that arose. Edith made her worry. She thought it would be terrible, but they all turned out to be just ordinary girls. One of the girls asked if anyone else had arrived. Another admitted that the girl from the next room said that she wanted to rest. She believed that she used the event to get out of the house. Another girl admitted that sometimes the walls at home begin to suffocate, not to mention this constant pressure of being married. The girl was surprised to hear this, because they were all still so young. A red-haired stranger timidly entered the room, apologizing for the interruption and saying that the butler told her to come here. The other girls greeted her, noting that they had just arrived. The girl remembered that this was the stranger she saw last night. She asked what her name was. The girl introduced herself as a clet. Shea even spat out her tea in surprise. One of the girls suggested that she use her scarf. The girl decided that this could not happen. It's just a huge coincidence, just a girl with the same name. But it was difficult for the girl to believe that it was just someone with red hair and the same name as the main character. Wiping her mouth, Shalia apologized to a clet. The girl asked if Eklat knew a place called Arikal Monastery. She admitted that she knew, because this was a monastery in the city in which she was born. The girl couldn't believe it. Even though she didn't know what Eklat looked like, she felt like she knew her the moment she saw her. 
She didn't expect to meet the girl here, but more importantly, she didn't understand what Acklet was doing here. Suddenly, the girl screamed that Aklet couldn't be here, attracting the attention of the rest of those gathered. After all, Eklet was now supposed to meet with Tesric at the monastery. The girl did not understand what Eklet was doing here, because now she was supposed to be in the monastery. The girl was again covered in memories. The girl asked Eklet to show her how to do it again. The sister superior asked the children what they were doing. The girl admitted that Eklet was doing something incredible. She immediately noted that there was nothing special about it. Eklet admitted that she just might do it since she saved Hans in the forest. She didn't tell anyone because there was nothing special about it. Besides, she didn't even know how to control it. The sister immediately ran away in fear, even though Eklet asked her not to do this. Coming to another abbess, the sister reported that nothing like this had ever happened in the history of their monastery. She stated that it was a type of witchcraft. The sister decided that they should report this to the head of the church and the palace. Another abbess feared that Eklet might then be summoned to the capital. This would mean that they would immediately lose one of their workers and the sorceress. The woman suggested using this opportunity to contact one of the high society families and find a patron. Each of them will pay generously to get a witch into their family. That's how it all started. From the meeting of a peasant girl and a patron. The girls anxiously asked Miss Shelia what had happened. They decided that the girl had already met Eclet before. The girl realized that she reacted so sharply because she was surprised. The girl didn't understand what she had just done. The girls were surprised that she just ran away. They thought it was a disaster. One of the girls suggested that perhaps they could finish the tea party. Others agreed it was a good idea. Eclet was the one person the girl should never have met. Nothing goes as planned. She knew she wanted to avoid Eclet the moment she saw her. The way she reacted then. It was a survival instinct. Besides, anyone can tell that this was the first meeting between the villain and the main character. The girl decided that she had to apologize to Eclet before she cut off her hands. But she was afraid of bumping into her again. The girl did not understand whether she could continue to communicate with her. Eclet Blanche. The girl did not understand how she got this surname. She wasn't born into a high-class family. The girl decided that she had to understand this first. The girl asked Edith how she chose who to send invitations to. After all, she said that she had prepared everything for the princess. She was sure that the woman had not invited just anyone. The woman admitted that there were no special standards. But first of all, all girls from noble families were approximately the age of the princess. She invited those who were suitable for her to fulfill the purpose that she had in mind. The princess's aunt was quite popular, she knew, due to her high status. Many came to her with honors and good intentions, but there were also those who became close to Edith for their own selfish purposes. And, to tell the truth, the woman could not stand such people, especially if they were future ladies. Among the girls, there are always those who are forced to do this. Acklet was a prime example of this. The woman admitted that she had heard that the princess disliked Eclet and rushed out of the room in a rage. The girl hastened to assure that everything was not like that. Edith said that Eclet Blanche was an orphan in the Ericol Monastery. A few months ago, she was adopted by Baron Blanche's family. All that remains of this family is their name. The girl was surprised to hear about the adoption. The girl did not understand when the story began to change. Why? Whether everything would end well if the story continued like this? But even if not, she couldn't do anything about it. The woman noted that this was quite obvious. They are trying to successfully marry Eklet into high society. Edith revealed that they were trying to increase their wealth by selling Eklet to a wealthy family. The woman said that initially Blanche's family had one son. Noticing that Shelia was distracted, Edith asked if she was listening. The girl assured that yes, but she herself could not believe what she heard. She couldn't believe that this was happening to all the girls she saw at the reception. She didn't understand why people always try to manipulate children. She decided that they would also try to sell her to some rich king. The girl decided that Eklet could handle everything. She is the main character. She can do anything. The girl ordered herself to control herself. The girl didn't understand how they could use the main character like that. The girl thought about how Jia He even took the time to create the perfect protagonist for Eklet. Suddenly, the door opened with a bang. A girl ran into the room asking Madame Edith for help. The woman asked Miss Lala what happened. The girl asked to hurry up, saying that the others were in danger. 
She noted that something strange was going on in this place. Edith asked Miss Lala to calm down, assuring her that there was simply no danger in her home. The girl stated that she knew exactly what she saw. Besides, she wasn't the only one who noticed it. The girl didn't understand what made Lala so excited. She remembered that the genre of this story was fantasy, so she assumed that maybe some legendary creature or something had appeared. Lala stated that the point is that the other girls are in danger because they saw the crown. The girl immediately asked her aunt where Riven was. She said that the guy asked if he could pick apples and she allowed it. Noticing the girls staring at him, Riven apologized and asked them to let him pass. One of them enthusiastically declared that she was right and asked who the hell he was. The girl said that she had never seen the crown and was walking around so calmly. Another girl asked if he had escaped from the dungeon. Riven assured that it was nothing, saying that he had arrived with Shelia. The girl noted that he couldn't even give them a clear answer and offered to sort it out with him. Her friend immediately agreed. Riven scaredly asked the girls to stop. Shelia appeared and ordered the girl to immediately lower her fist. Blocking Riven with herself, the girl said that it was too late to stop the performance, but he was one of her servants. The girls were surprised that she took the crown as her servant and admitted that they were afraid. Shalia guessed that when that girl said they were in danger, she assumed they meant the two of them. The girl said that there are a lot of prying eyes here, and Shelia should not allow the guy to walk around just like that. The princess noted that she was a guest like them, and therefore she did not understand why she had to do what they said. The girl hoped that these two did not usually treat their servants this way. Eklat ran up and asked Miss Shelia if she was okay, deciding that there was a fight going on here. Acklet said she didn't know what was going on here, but she suggested everyone calm down. She noted that everyone needed to get back inside before it started to rain. Looking at the dark clouds in the sky, the girls agreed to go back inside. They decided they could talk about it later. Eclette handed Riven the apple she had picked up earlier. Eclette decided that it was the guy who dropped the apple. He agreed, thanking her awkwardly. The girl was surprised that Eclette treated Riven like an ordinary person. It was so cliche. Just like in any other fairy tale, Eclette is kind to the person everyone makes fun of. This is the part where her kindness is shown. The girl didn't understand how it could work so perfectly. She assumed it was because Eclette is the main character. The woman who appeared sternly asked Eclette what she was doing here, ordering her to quickly come to her. The girl immediately obeyed meekly. The girl realized that this woman was one of those who was trying to sell her daughter. Shelia noted that it was time for them to return too. It looks like it's about to start raining. Already sitting in the building, Riven apologized to the princess. The girl didn't understand why. Riven noted that the princess only got into this unpleasant situation because he decided to wander around. The girl immediately rushed to assure him that it was not his mistake, but the guy insisted on his guilt. The guy noted that this was supposed to be a social event, and the princess had no opportunity to make friends. Even now she was in her room alone, and he couldn't help and thought it was because of him. The girl assured that this was not at all true. Besides, who said she couldn't make friends? It's not that she can't, it's that she chooses not to. The girl noted that she came here to relax and not to play and drink tea. The girl assured that this was true and suggested that we take a gondola ride when the weather gets better and return home. But before that, everything should be fine. The girl suggested that apologizing and thanking her would be normal. She will never see her again if she leaves this country. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. The girl was very surprised who it could be. She assumed it was Marion. Riven said he would take a look. Opening the door, he greeted the newcomer in surprise. The surprise guest was Eclette. The girl immediately apologized for coming without warning. She asked if she could ask Shelia a question. Acklet admitted that she wanted to ask Shalia something. The girl calmly asked what exactly, but inside she was panicking. She didn't understand why it was so unexpected. The girl forced herself to calm down and control herself. Rising from the bed, the girl greeted Miss Acklet, asking what exactly she wanted to ask. Eclette asked if Shelia had seen her brother. The girl was surprised to hear that Eclette has a younger brother. She did not believe that they had brought their only son here, a small boy with brown hair of short stature. It was already dinner time, but I couldn't find him. Acklet noted that he loves to fool around, but always comes back for dinner. Holding out the bead, the girl asked to look at it. 
She said that this bead is from a bracelet that Alec always wears. Her mother was very worried about the boy. Shelia admitted that she had not seen a single little boy, but she would like to. The girl did not understand what was happening. Why can't she say, I would like to help you in your search? Riven noted that if a child is lost, he can help with the search. Shelia was grateful to him for this. Eklat immediately assured that there was no need, because all the maids were already looking for him. Eklat admitted that until her brother was found, it would be better for Riven to stay in his room if it was not difficult for him. The girl admitted that her mother is very suspicious of the guy. Riven thanked him for the warning, and admitted that he remembered the myth about the crowns that kidnap other people's children on rainy days. Acklet noted that she was simply afraid that if the guy met her mother, it would be an unpleasant confrontation. Riven assured that he would be careful. The girl noted that one of the features of Eclet, she always tells the truth no matter what it is. Acklet again apologized for this and said that she was going to continue looking for Alec. Eclet suddenly asked Miss Shelia if they had met before. The girl decided that this would be simply impossible. Acklet simply remembered how Shelia had reacted during the tea party. After saying goodbye, Eclet left the room. The girl decided that as soon as the rain stopped, they needed to go to the palace, but before that she suggested that Riven go look for Alec. According to Marion, they had already thoroughly searched the entire top floor. Therefore, the girl suggested starting with a large hall. She assumed that he couldn't be outside because it was raining heavily there. The girl could only imagine what kind of reprimand the boy would receive from his mother. River said that they should go upstairs. The princess did not understand why, because they were already looking there. The guy pointed to the fallen bead from the boy's bracelet. The girl was surprised at how Riven found this bead. The guy noted that there was something special about this bracelet. He decided that it was a protective amulet. Some kind of spell has been cast on him, but its power is weak. Objects with magic have their own special light. River noted that it was not a very high-quality amulet, but it was still quite valuable. Obviously, the parents loved the boy very much. The girl suggested that perhaps this was Isonia's necklace. The girl was surprised that a son is so dear to a woman, but she just sells her daughter. She understood that it was none of her business, and the girl was also surprised by how Riven found out about this. The girl reminded Riven that he said that he could not use magic. The guy admitted that this was so, but noted that it was not magic, but something that he could see. The girl didn't understand what the difference was. If they can follow the bracelet's trail, that will be the biggest clue. Thank goodness Alec always wears this bracelet. River suggested that they should go to the last room. River led them to the massive door of the room. The girl offered to enter. She was worried that the boy might be injured. Suddenly, a stern female voice was heard. Turning around, the guys saw Madame Blanche. She asked what they were doing here. Shelia said they were very worried when they heard the boy was missing. Madame Blang was unhappy that the girl came with her crown. Riven shuddered in fear at this mention. Eklid appeared and invited her mother to go and rest, assuring her that she would continue to look for her brother. Seeing the guys, she was also surprised by their appearance and asked why they were here. The girl didn't even have time to figure out what happened when there was a resounding slap. Eclet pressed her hand to her burning cheek, where there was a red mark from the slap. The guys were surprised by what happened, not knowing what to say. The woman was angry that Eclet, being his older sister, could not keep track of him. She noted that if the girl was really worried about Alec, she would have started looking for him. She didn't even want to think that something had happened to him. The woman could not trust anyone. She decided that she should search this palace herself. Suddenly, the door of the room opened. The boy appeared in the doorway, looking at his mother in surprise. The woman immediately flew up to the child, asking where he was. Alec admitted that he hid in the closet because he wanted to surprise his mother, but he accidentally fell asleep. The woman suggested that her son quickly return home and eat together. She asked if he wanted to sleep and if the boy wanted her to carry him in her arms. The girl was still looking at the red mark on Eclet's cheek, which the woman didn't care about. The girl took Eclet's hand, asking her to wait. She immediately apologized, noting that she hoped the girl would understand all of today's confusion. Acklet noted that her mom is very sensitive when it comes to Alec. She said that she would tell everyone that they had found him. Eclet invited the guys to return to their rooms and rest. She thanked them for their help in finding her brother. The girl realized that she was worried about Eclet, and not about anyone else. 
the woman thought it was simply unbearable. It will never stop raining in this place. She wanted to leave as soon as possible. The woman told Acklet that it was time for her to go to bed too. The girl agreed, wishing her mother good night. The woman apologized to Acklet for what happened. She admitted that she didn't want this, but the girl already knew that, didn't she? Eklid assured that, of course, and retired to her room. Entering her room and closing the door, Eklid decided that it would take a little longer. She just needs to try even harder so that they will finally accept her and they will become a real family. Marion knew that the princess had missed the tea party again. The girl assured that she was actually enjoying the tea party right now, showing the maid her cup. Marion reported that the other young ladies had already gathered together. The girl was surprised that they had gathered despite the noise from yesterday. The maid noted that it was difficult to tell whether they were having tea or a quiet hour, since everyone was desperately looking for Alec last night. Noticing the bruises under the princess's eyes, Marion asked if she was okay. She noted that the girl did not need to personally participate in the search for the lost child. She should have left it like that. The girl could not sleep. She was shocked that Acklet was slapped. She didn't understand how someone could hit the main character like that. The girl decided that this woman would die first if she continued in the same spirit. The girl realized that there had been a change in the protagonist in the story, an evil stepmother and brothers and sisters. This was very popular in fairy tales. The girl suddenly remembered that in the original it was she who slapped Eclat. The girl didn't understand how she could even do this. Marion said that due to some circumstances, the whole house is on its ears. She suggested that maybe it was all because of this rain. Marion hoped it would stop soon. Edith agreed, believing that it could be useful for both of them. The woman couldn't believe that she really thought that way. Edith agreed that she was the right age, and that Acklet had red hair, which was a particularly valuable detail. Until they sorted everything out, Edith asked if the woman was sure that Eklet wanted this too. The woman assured that she was sure. She is her mother. She knows everything about her. Adit noted that a woman cannot be 100% sure. The woman immediately invited Eklet to come in, asking her to tell Madame what she thought about it. Eklet meekly declared that she would unquestioningly follow her mother's orders. Edith was happy with this arrangement. She invited them to have a cup of tea and look at the list of grooms. The woman advised Eklet to have fun and enjoy herself. After all, after the girl leaves this place, she will be busy preparing for the upcoming wedding. The girl was surprised that Shelia was still here. She politely asked if the girl could leave, because judging by what she saw, Shelia was not interested in communicating. The girl wouldn't call it politeness, but in any case, she was going to leave anyway. In addition, the girl noted that the crown that Shelia brought with her made many girls worry. The princess noted that she was about the same age as her sister so she told herself to simply ignore it. She should act like an adult. The girl suggested that perhaps this crown had something to do with the disappearance of Eclat's brother. The princess assured herself that she really shouldn't pay attention to it, but it was starting to irritate her. Shalia assured Miss Rosa that, unfortunately, this was not possible. After all, they were going to ride a gondola today, especially since the rain had stopped. Of course, by we, she meant herself and her crown. Rose decided that the girl was doing this on purpose. Shalia assured that of course not, and invited Miss Rose to join. The girls standing nearby decided that these two got along so well. Rose stated that she feels it every time they talk. It's simply impossible to communicate with a girl. Rose promised that she would make a formal request to Madame Edith to force Shelia to leave. Edith approached and decided that the girl was doing all this to force Shelia to leave. She asked if her niece had offended the girl in any way. Rose was shocked to hear that Shelia was Edith's niece. The girls quickly realized that if Shelia was Madame Edith's niece, that meant she was a princess. The girl realized that the time had come. She didn't want to believe that that dream was really an omen. The girl found herself in the middle of a long, dark corridor. She didn't understand how she got here. Moreover, this place did not look like Edith's palace. The girl asked why she was here. Suddenly, the girl saw Eklet. She was also surprised to meet Miss Shelia. The girl asked what Eclet was doing here at this hour. She admitted that she was sleeping, and when she opened her eyes, she was already here. Shalia suggested that we first see if anyone else was here. Suddenly, she heard someone calling the princess downstairs. The girl invited Eclet to go together. Eclet did not understand what nonsense the girl was saying. After all, the voice was calling the princess, 
which means they are looking for her, not Shelia. Acklet said the girl was just a fake. She asked what Shelia was doing in her place. The girl tried to reassure Eclet that it was not what she thought, but suddenly she woke up abruptly, immediately jumping up in bed. She breathed a sigh of relief, realizing that it was just a dream. The girl did not understand what kind of strange dream it was. The woman looked through the names of potential suitors, the second son of Baron Fisher, the youngest son of Baron Dupre. Taking the second sheet, she decided to see who was next. Ultimately, the woman said that neither of them suited them. This irritated her so much. The woman noted that despite Edith's good attitude towards her, she still looked down on her. The woman decided that this list of suitors was a slap in her direction, but they were her last hope. On the other hand, the woman thanked the goddess for the fact that Eklid is very trusting. The girl was ready to do anything if only she would show her a little warmth. The woman thought that perhaps it would be better to send Eklet to one of the families of the new aristocrats. This way they could use her to provide support until Alec grew up. It was so difficult for her to act like her real mother. The woman decided that if Eklet gave birth to a red-haired son, she would gain even more influence. Then the girl will have her own real family. It will be good for both them and her. Shalia realized that she was so tired. She couldn't sleep because of that dream. Perhaps it was just remorse. She hoped it wasn't an omen or anything. Now the girl couldn't even say that she came here to rest, but she was glad that at least the rain had finally stopped. Shelia decided that she needed to tell Edith immediately that she was leaving. Edith was glad that her house was finally lively. She liked it when it was a little noisy. Marion asked if Madame Edith did this on purpose. The woman assured that she had made a mistake. She didn't like that the maid didn't believe her. Marion assured that she was just worried about the princess. She didn't know that there would be so many guests here. The girls kept babbling around the princess. One asked if the girl used any special perfume. Another began to say something about her family. And the third assured that after the princess returned to the palace. Shelia did not understand what was happening. One of the girls noted that the weather was good today and suggested that everyone else go for a walk. The others supported her idea, offering to walk with the princess. One of the girls admitted that there was something she wanted to ask the princess. The girl asked if Shelia knew what time the crown prince was going to return to the capital. The girl remembered Edith saying that not only for the benefit of their families, but also for the sake of their own ambitions— they had already announced their participation in this fight in order to make their debut in society. Now she understood what her aunt meant. Shelia realized that for these girls the prince was the ideal husband, her younger brother, Lucius Del Joseph Edenrose, the crown prince of this country and the second main male character of the novel. He was unrequitedly in love with Eclet and it didn't end well for him. But it didn't matter to the girl. Jay He was her only real sister, Eclet entered, timidly as always, and greeted Miss Shelia. Eclet immediately realized that she had said it wrong. Not Miss Shelia. She immediately apologized, admitting that she didn't mean to be rude to the princess. Shelia assured that the girl can speak as she pleases. The woman who entered next immediately sternly ordered Eclet to stop embarrassing herself in front of the princess. She asked Shelia to forgive her daughter for her lack of manners, noting that she had many shortcomings but the woman wanted more to introduce her son to the princess. She suggested continuing the conversation elsewhere. The princess may think that she is praising him like a mother, but the woman assured that he is truly a smart child. The woman assured that he could make good company, despite his young age. The more the girl thought about it, the more she became convinced that the woman looked like the worst villain. Grabbing the girl by the shoulders, the princess assured that this was impossible, because she and Eclet already had plans, she was very surprised by this statement. Shalia suggested they go to her room. The girls were very surprised by what happened. They didn't understand why Eclet had become so close to the princess. Nobody knew why they became so close. Having served the tea, Riven asked to be careful, assuring that it was hot. He asked to let him know if they needed anything else. Eclet awkwardly thanked the guy. The girl did not understand what to do. She didn't think about it when she invited Eclet to her room, and now she didn't know what to talk to her about. The girl even thought about calling Marion. Unexpectedly, Eclet thanked the princess for going to look for her brother, and for this event, too. She heard that this was all arranged especially for her. Eclet never even dreamed of visiting something like this. 
Acklett also admitted that this was her first conversation with a peer. The girl was glad that she got the chance to create many wonderful memories before the wedding, and it was all thanks to the princess. The girl was very surprised to hear about the wedding. She did not know that Eklet was going to get married and asked when this should happen. The girl replied that after the end of the meeting, adding that her mother herself would choose a groom for her. The girl didn't understand what was happening here, but she definitely decided that this story had gone too far. Marion reported that she was told that he was the youngest son of Baron Clough. She didn't know how old he was, but apparently over 30. In addition, the maid added that there are rumors that he has a whole mountain of jewelry at home. She brought her sincere congratulations to Miss Acklett on her wedding. Shalia didn't believe this was really happening. The girl forced herself to calm down, suggesting that in this world such men are beautiful. Or not. She decided that this story was starting to sound like one of those crazy dramas that Jay He loves to watch. Shalia decided that she would be better off as a villain right now. If this is a test that the princess must overcome, then in the girl's opinion it was already too cruel. The girl decided that this should not be allowed, especially those who have a younger sister. No, no one in their right mind should allow this to happen. The princess asked Eclette if everything suited her. Does she really want this wedding? Eclette didn't understand why the princess was asking her this. Poking the portrait of her fiancé in the girl's face, she asked her to look at it carefully. Eclette was surprised by this behavior. The girl asked if this is really the man who suits Eclette. The princess asked her to be honest with her. Looking at the portrait, Eclette admitted that, of course not, not at all. Shalia breathed a sigh of relief. Now Eclette knew what she needed to do. The girl assured that she needed to tell Madame Blang that she could not marry him. Eclet hesitantly objected that Mother herself had chosen him for Eclet. The princess had no idea what the girl's life had been like before. She could never make decisions on her own. Shelia assured that she would help the girl. Eclet had the right to refuse. The girl assured that if Madame Blang had any feelings at all, she would have to change her mind. And if problems arise, Shelia will intervene. Eclet decided that the princess was trying to say that she was on the girl's side. Shelia assured her that this was true. Acklet decided that she would do it then. She will tell her mother. Shalia assured Eclette that this was a very brave move on her part. The princess asked to be sure to tell her everything tomorrow so that her mother would not say. Eclette stopped in front of the door, collecting her thoughts. She told herself to be brave. She believed that she could do it. Eclette finally found the strength to open the door and enter the room. The woman immediately perked up when she noticed that Eclette had returned, she asked what the princess wanted and what they were talking about. The girl assured that they just had a cup of tea, and that's all. The woman wondered if the princess had said anything useful, but then decided that it was her mistake to expect something from Eclette. She said that next time the girl should take her brother with her. Eclette knew she had to say this. If not now, she won't have another chance. Clenching her hands into fists and gathering her courage, the girl told her mother that they needed to talk about marriage. Hesitatingly, Eclette asked if the wedding could be postponed for a while. The girl said that she wanted to take care of Alec. She also added that she would work if she could. Eclette was very surprised when she heard her mother's cheerful laugh. The girl looked at the woman with frightened eyes. Stopping laughing, she asked if Eclette had said everything she wanted. The girls noted what a beautiful morning it was. The weather was perfect for them all to go for a walk when the princess arrived. As soon as they mentioned this, Shelia appeared. Shelia noted that they all arrived quite early. The girls reported that they could not keep the princess waiting. They suggested that Madame Edith must have a wonderful garden labyrinth. Shelia hardly listened to them. She kept wondering where Eclette was. The princess was sure that she was close to those girls. Shelia asked if anyone had seen Eclette. One of the girls said that Miss Acklett was leaving today. Shelia was shocked by this news. But it was not the girl herself who told them this, but her younger brother Alec. The princess decided that this could not be. The girl immediately rushed back to the palace. Eclette's departure was very sudden. She didn't say a word about it yesterday. The princess began to think that perhaps she should have spoken to Madame Blanche instead of Eclette. The princess rushed as fast as she could to Eclette's room, hoping that she had not left yet. The girl didn't understand why she was so worried. Timidly opening the door, she asked if Eclette was there. The girl called Eclette several times, but no one responded. The princess was afraid that they had really left. She didn't know what to do then. 
Walking further, the girl suddenly saw Jay He sitting on the bed. The very next moment, the girl realized that it was a clet. Shalia didn't understand what it was, but she was grateful to the goddess that the girl was still there. She called Eclet carefully. Eclet was surprised by the princess's appearance and asked what she was doing here. Shalia admitted that she heard she was leaving, that's why she came. The princess anxiously asked Eclet if she was crying. Eclet immediately assured that, of course not. The girl asked the princess not to worry, saying that she was just playing staring contest with the cat. Shalia decided that being a bad liar was part of the main character's personality. The girl assumed that Madame Blonde scolded Eclet after she told her about the wedding. Eclet admitted that she was very sorry. She knew how worried the princess was about her, but the girl admitted that the conversation was not going very well. Thinking about it, Eclet decided that perhaps her mother was right, but she was still very grateful to the princess. The girl promised that even after her departure, she would not forget the kindness of the princess. The girl expected this. She should have intervened from the very beginning. It wasn't that she didn't know how Eclet was treated. She knew perfectly well. I saw it with my own eyes, so she couldn't just turn a blind eye to it. The girl would be lying if she said she wasn't worried about what would happen if she interfered. But she needed to help Eclet, even if just a little. Extending her hand to the girl, the princess asked if she wanted to go with her. The princess asked the girl to go with her. Eclet was surprised. She didn't quite understand where exactly Shelia was calling her. The princess answered that to where she lives, to the palace. Eclet clarified whether the princess meant the palace where the emperor lives. Shelia confirmed, which caused a strong reaction from the girl. The princess immediately asked her to calm down. Eclet assured that the palace was not a place for her, because she did not know how to do anything. The princess remembered that this was about the same thing that Riven said. The girl assured that Eclet need not worry. Shelia said that what Eclet could do there would be decided gradually. The princess assured that young people should have the opportunity to relax and have fun. Eclet immediately objected that she was not that young. She is old enough to get married. The princess said enough of this. She asked what Eclet wanted to do and offered to go with her to the palace first. The woman was surprised to hear about the palace. Eclet immediately lowered her gaze at the sight of her mother. Madame Blanche said that they were just about to leave, but apparently he would have to stay a little longer. The woman suggested that perhaps the princess would be better off talking to her rather than Eclet. She admitted that her daughter lacks a lot. Shalia decided that this was complete nonsense. The princess decided that now she must isolate Eclet as far as possible from the woman. It was too late to offer false pleasantries. When Eclet goes with her to the palace, her relationship with her family will end. Shalia noted that they could stop pretending to be a family. The woman noticed that the princess was saying cruel things. Alec is her son. The princess cannot even imagine how much he loves Eclet. The princess noted that in any case, it was up to Eclet to decide. She asked the girl what she wanted. Does she want to go with her to the palace, or... As expected, the number of plates has changed since last week. Grace knew that only one person could break them. Anna ran into the room screaming. Grace noticed that the girl was easygoing. Anna assured that now was not the time to count how many plates she had broken. The girl did not understand how one could be so apathetic in such a situation. She asked the woman to quickly come with her, because they had a huge problem. Gray didn't understand what problem she was talking about. The girl asked where Miss Gray was. Susan replied that Anna had gone after her, but that could only be resolved with the help of Miss Grace. The girls did not understand what to do, because the princess was not in the residence. They also had no idea what these people were doing here when the princess wasn't even in the palace. Eclet began to mumble something in response. The princess decided that she would ask for the last time. As the main character, Eclet must climb an extremely high tower. So even if she refuses to help Shalia, the girl will respect her choice. After long minutes of silence, Eclet admitted that she had thought about it a lot. She asked her mother if she remembered the day when she came to take her home. Eclet didn't understand what had happened. The girl assured her that now was not the time to hang out the laundry. She asked if Eclet remembered the noble family that stayed briefly at the monastery. The girl admitted that there are rumors that they want to adopt Eclet. They said it had to be her, no one else. Eclet asked if the girl was sure that they were talking about her. Eclet admitted that she made a vow to herself back then. She wanted to be a good daughter so that the woman would never regret her choice. But now Eclet most wanted to be with someone who cared about her at least a little.
Acklett admitted that she doesn't think she can continue living like this. She noted that the woman never thought of her as a real family member, but that was enough for her. Covering Eclette with herself, Shelia declared that this was enough. The girl admitted that it was a good job. The princess assumed that the woman understood everything that was said. The princess thanked the woman for coming to the event in her honor, however. She did not even have an official invitation. Shalia noted that it would be better if she and her dear son left them. Immediately. The princess also added that she was aware of all the terrible things that the woman did to Eclette, but Shalia will make sure that she tells her everything in great detail. I just had to wait. Grace expressed her sincere regrets, saying that since the princess was not in the residence at the moment, they could not receive guests. The woman was surprised and asked if they had received her letter, or if she had sent it in a dream. The girls had no idea how they knew this. Grace apologized for her directness, but she asked what was the reason for their unexpected visit. Gabriel replied that this, of course, concerns the crown. The woman said that she has a long-standing practice of strictly prohibiting the damned from entering the palace grounds. She was sure that the princess could not help but know this fact. Grace assured them that in that case they had nothing to worry about. She admitted that she was also worried at first, but it turned out that he was no different from the others. These were all just terrible rumors. Gabrielle assured that this was what she wanted to know and asked if they could see the crown. Grace apologized again, saying that he was not here. He travels with the princess. Grace was sure that she should tell the woman that the princess was taking very good care of him, so even if the temple... Gabriel interrupted her, saying that she understood everything. Gabriel asked if the maid thought they would ever return. Grace didn't understand what she meant. The woman assured that she didn't mean anything, she was just interested. Gabriel's companion said it was a waste of time and asked her to leave. The woman agreed with Raphael, since neither the princess nor the crown were here. Gabriel turned around and walked away. Anna didn't understand what was wrong with her. The girl was surprised that the woman left so easily without even saying goodbye. Clutching her chest, Grace didn't understand what was wrong with her and why she felt this way. Grace felt like they had lost. Susan admitted that this was the first time she had seen Gibriel up close. The girl noted that she was not at all what she expected. The girl admitted that even though she was a saint, she expected it to be some plump old lady. Anna wondered if Susan really didn't know this, because she wasn't even real. She was just a substitute. Grace shushed the girl sternly. Anna immediately apologized, asking if she should go and pray for forgiveness right now. Grace decided they would leave it out. It was about time. Gabriel decided that it would be better if the princess did not return at all. But this was just a dream. If she had gone to live quietly, without fuss, then there would have been no need for bloodshed. But the woman decided that it didn't matter. The end is already a foregone conclusion, no matter how sooner or later it comes. They may find confirmation later. Gabrielle decided that as soon as they returned, they would need to deal with the crown. Marion said that on the orders of the princess, she would begin preparations for departure. She promised that she would do everything as soon as possible. The maid noted that every time the princess leaves, she brings home someone new. Marion could only guess what the princess had for this reason. She said that she would go and check if everything was okay with the preparations. Shalia decided that it would be better for Eclette to remain in the palace as a guest. The girl did not think that she could bring herself to make the hero of this story her servant. It was necessary to make sure that Eclette met Tezric, just like in the original story. But there was something that really bothered the girl. Eclette's magic is her greatest gift. The girl didn't understand why she hadn't used it yet. Shalia suggested that maybe Eclette had a problem with it, or... The girl decided that things were finally starting to look up, so she would think about it later. Eclette was very surprised when she heard about the punishment for her mother. She asked the princess to think it over again, assuring her that she was not as bad as she seemed, and they also needed to think about Alec. Shalia thought the woman was much worse. She already realized that Eclette is the main character, but she is too naive. Perhaps it was even for the better. The girl also didn't know how much strength she could build up, but she thought she was still pretty good at making threats. The girl noted that the woman was lucky that Eclette was so kind. She still had a good opinion of her mother who wanted to sell her. The princess promised that she would let her get away with it now, only because Eclette insisted on it. However, the girl warned her not to try to get another Eclette, she ordered her to surrender and asked if they understood each other. The woman nodded affirmatively. 
Eclat also mentioned that she wants to write to Alec from time to time, so the woman should dissuade him from answering these letters. This child, Alec, is not even her brother. Either way, the girl decided it didn't matter. They won't see them when they leave here. The same applied to Edith. All this, this place, this picture stressed the girl. Looking at the picture, the girl wondered when it was made, how old they were here. The woman in the painting is Shelia's mother, Gretchen, and the red-haired man is the emperor. In this case, the blonde is her real father. The irony is that Shelia became a fake princess. The three were childhood friends who grew up together, and both men were in love with Gretchen. She responded to the love of one, and they got married. However, the man died due to an accident, and the girl was already carrying his child. Another man, after losing a friend, looked after a widow drowning in despair. It all ended with them getting together. Everything would be fine if they lived happily ever after, keeping everything a secret. But there was a big problem. The man was second in line to the throne. One day, he had to accept the post of emperor after his brother went crazy. Twin heirs appeared in the kingdom, neither of whom had a drop of royal blood. Eclet is the emperor's real daughter and the true heir, while Shelia is just a fake, and yet she will personally bring her to the palace. The girl noted how funny everything turned out. Riven arrived and said that everything was ready and the carriage was waiting. Miss Acklet also said that she was also ready to go. The girl greeted the princess, thanking her for taking her with her again. The girl promised that she would do everything in her power and asked if she should take these bags. Riven assured that the girl need not worry about it, and he would handle everything himself. Eclet stepped back awkwardly. The princess suddenly realized that she really had no other choice. The maid asked if she was still there. The girl did not believe that she really planned to stay there forever and offered to find someone who could throw her out of there. The butler approached and asked what was going on. The maid stammered and said that the madwoman outside said she wanted to meet Lord Tesric. The girls told her not to, but she continued to wait outside. She practically set up camp at the main gate. The butler asked if she had been told that Lord Tesric was not in the capital, so the meeting was impossible. The maids assured that, of course, but the woman said that she would wait for his return. The girls reported that she even came up with a crazy lie that she had a unique talent. Edith asked if the guys were leaving too early. The woman admitted that she would like them to stay longer. The princess assured that she had had enough rest. In addition, the girl noted that it seemed that their company had somehow become larger. Edith assured that she understood everything. The woman wanted to add something else, but then changed her mind. Edith assured that she was really glad to see the girl after so much time. The woman wished a safe journey to her dear princess. The maid asked Madame if everything was okay. Edith assured that everything was fine, announcing that the party was over. She ordered the maid to send the other girls home and prepare everything to send a letter for the prince. Grace noted that she may be wrong, but it seems that every time the princess leaves, she returns with someone or something. The girl noticed that Marion said the same thing and assured that this time everything would be exactly the same. Grace was unhappy about being ahead of her. She informed the princess that something had happened during her absence. Grace said that they had guests from the temple and with them, the main priestess herself. As expected, they asked about Riven. Grace noted that the woman was obsessed with rules and would undoubtedly find an excuse for taking the guy with her. The girl understood that she had to face them sooner or later. Last time she was so surprised that she ran away, but she was sure that this time everything would be different. She is the greatest villain who brought the main character to the castle. But she wasn't even a villain anymore. The girl noted that they should be grateful to her. She found the main character they were looking for, even though she was right in front of their noses. The princess said that she had an important task for Grace and Marion that needed to be completed now. The girls involuntarily tensed, not knowing what to expect. Anna immediately noticed that Eklat was also a redhead. She told the girl not to be arrogant just because the princess herself brought her. She would end up working with them one way or another. Anna added that only professionals can enter the kitchen. Smiling, Susan assured that the girl need not worry because Anna is always like this. The girl immediately asked what Eklat was good at, cleaning or doing laundry. She answered hesitantly that there was nothing she was good at. But Eklat immediately assured that they need not worry, because even a very small portion of food would be enough for her. The girls immediately objected that this would not work, because then Eklat would not be able to grow normally. 
They assured that there was more than enough food in the castle. They suggested that the girl try it right away. The conversation was interrupted by Riven entering. The guy asked if Eklat was there for an hour, but the next moment he saw the girl himself. He said that the princess was looking for Miss Eklat. He asked to be allowed to accompany the girl to her room. The girls were surprised that the princess wanted to find a teacher. Grace bluntly reminded Shalia that she once said, There isn't a teacher worth having in the whole world who could teach me anything, and she chased away no less than five different teachers. The girl didn't understand how Shelia could be such an idiot. She ordered the maids to forget about it because it was already in the past. One of the girls suggested asking Dr. Mason, but the princess noted that not this madman. The princess added that there was one important condition. It consists in the fact that the teacher must be a magician. The shield around the castle must have been created by a very powerful magician. But this shield is still not strong enough to break the spell cast on Eclet. The former priestess created a spell to hide her daughter's identity. Eclet's golden eyes will prove that she is of royal blood. They will appear once her magic surpasses her mother's. Then the spell will break and everything will be revealed. But the girl didn't think that Eclet knew about it. The maids assured that there were quite a lot of magic teachers, and several people had already come to mind. They noted that it would be a good idea to ask someone from the main palace for help. But in this case, you need a compelling reason for this request. Another option was a temple. Their conversation was interrupted by Riven appearing. He apologized and said that Miss Acklet had come to see the princess. The girl decided that she had to be strong in order to take care of her people. In the morning, the princess was awakened by the maid, who said that it was time to wake up, because the teacher she asked for was already waiting outside. The girl was extremely surprised that they found him in one day. She thought it would take a while, a month there, or at least a week. The maid said that it was a teacher from the temple. The princess was surprised that Marino asked to leave the teacher, even if he disappointed her. The girl asked who he was, since the maid said so. Marion admitted that she didn't think he was qualified enough to teach the princess, however. Due to the fact that she had already kicked out several teachers before, there weren't many willing to try their luck at her mercy. The princess repeated that she did not remember anything like that. Approaching the door, Marion asked the girl to follow her. The girl kept thinking that this teacher was not qualified enough to teach her. At least this meant that Gilbert wouldn't appear out of nowhere. Seeing that same teacher, the girl froze in place in surprise. She decided that he could not be the teacher Marion was talking about. The princess was extremely surprised that the guy was her age. Marion said she would wait outside. The girl didn't understand how he could teach people, because the guy looked so young. She suggested that he might be a genius or something. The girl decided that now was not the time to be arrogant. She noted that she was glad to meet the teacher and asked how she should address him. The guy introduced himself as Raphael. He noted that he was just a student at the temple and asked not to address him formally. Raphael said that he was urgently chosen because the princess asked for a teacher so that he could start immediately. The girl noted that if he was a student, it meant that the higher-ups did not bother about it, so they sent him. The girl suddenly thought about the fact that she did not remember Raphael. This meant that he wasn't even a minor character in the original story. Therefore, the girl decided that there should be no problem if it was him. The girl thought that this was probably the main requirement for a teacher. The princess said that she would treat the guy as her mentor, but before that she inquired about one of her conditions, namely magic. The princess asked to demonstrate it. Raphael noted that it was impossible to use magic in the castle without permission, but he put his hand forward intending to make a demonstration. Eklat was surprised that there was absolutely nothing for her to do, because the palace was so big. Anna noted that it could be the size of a pea, and still there would not be any instructions for the girl in it. Eclet wondered if she could at least get her maid uniform. Anna assured that the girl would have to wait a little longer before wearing this cute outfit. Anna assured that once the princess made a decision, she would give the girl a lot of grueling work. Riven stopped by and asked if the girls had seen the princess for an hour. Riven admitted that he had not seen the princess since the morning. He asked if she had missed lunch. The guy also did not see Marion. Now that he thought about it, he also had no idea about it. Eclet said that if Sir Riven is looking for the princess, then she's probably already studying on the third floor. Along with Miss Marion, the guy thanked the girl for the information. Eclet didn't understand why Anna was looking at her like that. 
The maid said that she knew everything that was happening in this castle like the back of her hand. Therefore, Anna did not understand how a girl could know something that she did not know. Eclette explained that she simply saw the princess on the way here. Anna assumed that the girl was following Shelia. Riven suddenly realized that Eclette was very strange. He didn't realize it at Aunt Princess's house because of all the fuss about Alec's bracelet, but for the first time Riven couldn't see someone's aura, but he can see it even in animals. Seeing Marion, the guy was very surprised. The maid asked what Riven was doing here. The guy admitted that he wanted to ask her the same question. Riven asked what about the princess. Has she finished dinner with their guest? Marion said yes, but admitted that the meeting was still ongoing. Riven suddenly froze, looking at the room in surprise. Riven had never seen such an ominous force, and yet the princess was there now. The guy immediately rushed towards the room in alarm. Marion warned that Riven needed to knock first. The guy did not pay attention to this, immediately throwing open the door. They were greeted by an empty room, which made the guys quite surprised. He had no idea where the princess had gone. Marion ran into the room in fear. She didn't believe that it had happened again, that the princess would do that again. The maid began to look into all corners, trying to find the girl. Marion asked the princess to stop these games and go out immediately. She didn't understand why the girl did this suddenly. Riven even had to shout to get Marion to pay attention to him. Marion realized that Riven didn't know, and said that the princess used to like to hide in order to attract attention. Noticing the guy's alarmed look, the maid asked what was wrong. Riven replied that it doesn't matter now. The guy asked who the princess was with. Marino replied that she had met with the temple teacher and assured her that there was nothing to worry about. They must have just gone out for a while. Marion suggested waiting for them until dinner. Riven wondered if it was someone from the temple. Would that mean the princess was safe? But he couldn't ignore the dark magic in the room. He was afraid that the princess might not return. But Riven didn't understand what else he could do in this situation, other than just sit and wait for her to return. Arriving at the village and opening her eyes, the first thing the girl saw was the sky. This surprised her greatly, because before that she had been in the castle. Getting up and looking around, the girl wondered how she ended up on the street. Standing on a hill, the princess saw a castle in the distance. She decided that this was impossible. The girl assumed that they had teleported. She had no idea how it happened. The girl immediately frantically began to check whether her arms and legs were in place. She did not want to sacrifice her limbs for this. Raphael approached and was glad that the girl had finally woken up. The princess did not understand how he dared to do this. At the very least, he should have warned her. Raphael believed that he had acted somewhat imprudently. The guy said that fainting is a common effect for those who have not previously used magic. He really couldn't imagine that it would have such an effect on the princess. Raphael promised that he would take full responsibility for this incident and apologized. The princess said that she preferred to travel by carriage. She also added that the guy does not need to beg for forgiveness, because he demonstrated his abilities perfectly. The girl did not understand what kind of child this was. Was this all to avoid teaching her? She decided not to risk finding out who his replacement would be. Smiling widely, the princess announced that Raphael had been accepted. The girl noted that this kid still needs to work on his poker face. In any case, the princess hoped that they could avoid something like this in the future. She suggested going back because the others were probably worried about them. The girl was surprised to find no hairpins on her head. The princess suggested that it might have fallen out. Raphael reported that there is a possibility that she disappeared into the vacuum during teleportation. The girl decided that a walk to the castle would be the best solution. Raphael immediately hastened to assure the princess that he was joking, but it was already too late. But the girl admitted that it must be wonderful to have such an opportunity to travel. Raphael admitted that perhaps this was too cruel, but as far as he knew, no one in the royal family had magical powers. The girl didn't want to be told what she couldn't do. Dumb Witch was one of Shalia's nicknames because she was born without any talent. They called her that because she was so different from Eclet. Shelia succeeded only in gluttony, drunkenness, and entertainment. That's how it all started. But the girl didn't know what she could do about all this. There is only room here for one talented girl with magical powers. Raphael noted that if the princess wanted, he could check it out. He added that this is not entirely accurate. All he could determine was whether someone had magical powers. For more accurate information, you will need to contact the temple.
Placing her palm in the guy's palm, the princess decided that a simple check would not harm. A few moments later, the girl hesitantly asked Raphael if it worked. The girl admitted that she felt some changes. Raphael admitted that, as expected, something was wrong. He ignored all these strange rumors, but the girl was truly not the princess he knew. Raphael asked who she was. The girl was surprised because she wanted to ask the guy this. Approaching the princess and grabbing her hand, Raphael asked who she was. The girl was surprised. She didn't understand what he wanted to say by this and believed that she should be the one asking him this. Pulling her hand back, the girl was in a panic. Has he already guessed that it is a fake? What should she do? What should she say? How to get out of this situation? Having calmed down, she decided that everything was fine. She was still a princess. The princess asked how he dared to behave like that. He's not even a priest yet to talk to her like that. The girl asked if the bosses realized how rude their employees were. His words also insulted the princess's father. She could have easily decapitated him for this. However, since she has already chosen Raphael as her teacher, she would like to give him a chance. The girl revealed all her cards. Now they are just a princess and a priest's apprentice. So far, she was able to resolve this issue. Now the most important thing was to return to the palace intact. Kneeling down in front of the princess, Raphael humbly apologized and declared that he was ready to bear any punishment. The girl was surprised that it actually worked. She needed to get to the castle before the guy changed his mind and wanted to perform another magic trick. She assured Raphael that everything was fine and he could get up. The princess added that she was tired, and that's why they should go back. Marion hoped that the princess would return before dark. The girl asked what it was, and Riven ordered her to immediately step back. It was a magic circle for teleportation. The girl was glad that she returned and her arms and legs remained in place. Marion immediately ran up to the princess, asking where she had gone without warning them. The girl apologized to Marion. She wanted to say that she had just been kidnapped, but then she simply assured the maid that it didn't matter and she didn't have to worry. The girl could not tell them what happened. She had many questions, but now the princess suggested that Raphael continue his lessons tomorrow and leave it at that today. He resignedly agreed. Riven carefully examined the guy. He seemed so ordinary to him. When the door closed behind the guy, the girl was glad that he had finally left. She apologized to Marion again for making her worry. And Ravenna, too. Tears came to the guy's eyes. He warned the princess that she couldn't just disappear. The girl was shocked by his behavior. She immediately apologized to the guy, asking him not to cry. The girl hastened to assure Riven that it was an accident. In any case, wherever she goes, it is her home. She once again asked Riven not to cry. Raphael, last name missing, born in an orphanage in the capital. The girl noted that his story is similar to Eclet. He has been living in the temple for a long time. There was nothing unusual about him or his background. The girl was wondering what happened. Maybe he just said it that way. If so, she should forget about it. But the girl was worried that he knew the real princess. There was a knock on the door, and after permission, Raphael entered the room. The princess apologized in advance, saying that she was not able to do so today. After yesterday, she couldn't sleep. She tried to forget about what the guy said yesterday. But the more she thought about it, the harder it was for her to let go. Raphael assured that he was sorry. The girl immediately noted that there was no need to worry. She just wanted to ask something. Whatever Raphael knew, she should have used it. The girl asked if it was actually a fake, what the guy would do with it. The girl warned that Raphael needed to answer. She needed to know the guy's answer so she could trust him. Raphael honestly admitted to the princess that it was nothing. The guy wouldn't do anything. After all, he is just a rookie priest. The girl noted that she would remember this for the future. She asked if they had met before. Raphael replied that it was a very long time ago. Raphael remembered seeing the princess once. All members of the royal family are required to undergo testing for magical powers. The guy was there that day. He admitted that the essence of the princess was different from what it was before, so he was wary. Now, thinking about it, the guy realized that it would be unforgivable. Everyone believed that the princess had no magical abilities, but the aura protecting the royal family is still strong. It was true, but the guy got on the girl's nerves. She didn't know what Raphael meant by essence since she had no magical powers at all. If something had changed, the girl wondered if it could be because of their souls. In any case, 
Raphael at least had no doubt what family the girl belonged to. Little does he realize that the princess has swapped bodies with someone else. Although they seem to have resolved this misunderstanding, the girl decided that it would be better to keep him close and keep an eye on him. The princess admitted that she was also worried now. Why would she change? The princess noted that she really wanted Raphael to stay in the palace from tomorrow and try to understand why this all happened. The guy was surprised by this request. Raphael reminded the princess that he belonged to the temple. She noted that the guy himself said that he had a lower position. Even so, she would greatly appreciate him using all his powers to help her. First of all, the princess said that a girl would come here soon and she would like Raphael to check if she has magical abilities. The guy noted that in this case, the girl should go to the temple. The princess noted that she has the gifted Raphael here, so there is no point in going there. This girl was the reason why Shelia chose a magician teacher for herself. She was sure that Eclet had magical powers, but she didn't think she was aware of it. The princess assured that the girl did not need to know what Raphael was doing. The guy noted that he believed that the princess wanted a slave more than a teacher. The girl shushed him, telling him that Eclet had already arrived. Eclet greeted the girl, saying that she had been told that the princess wanted to see her. Shalia invited her in. She assured that it was nothing important and introduced the girl to her teacher. The girl believed that this brat Raphael was trying to deceive her. She didn't understand how he dared to say that Eclet had no magical abilities at all. Raphael asked what the princess meant by abilities. The girl did not understand what he meant. The guy noted that it's not that Eclet doesn't have any abilities. However, the guy added that if he had such a level of magic, he would not have been able to complete his training at the academy. The girl was shocked. She didn't understand how a guy could say such a thing. She could accept what he said about the princess's lack of powers, but she couldn't accept why he would say such things about Eclet, especially because it's not true. Raphael noted that this was just a preliminary test. If the princess wants to explore further, she should go to the temple. The girl noted that at the moment it would be difficult to take Eclet there. Raphael added that all this is individual. The guy admitted that he had heard of cases where someone was able to increase the level of their magical abilities through great effort or due to special circumstances. However, Raphael noted that such cases are extremely rare, so you should not count on them. The girl realized that somewhere along the line, everything was mixed up. She had to find a way to awaken Eclet's magic. No matter how hard a girl thinks, the power of love is all she can come up with. Clenching her fists, the girl decided to think some more about how she could help Eclet. In the original story, Eclet immediately met Tezric, and after that, everything fell into place for her. Well, that's a special event if there ever was one. After all, this is a meeting of the main characters. Tezric thought that the princess would not want to see him until he found the necklace. He didn't understand why she added that he should look presentable. Tesric wondered why the princess was so fickle. In any case, he had something to give her. He ordered a letter to be prepared accepting the princess's invitation. Tesric also asked what about that girl. The butler noted that things seemed to be getting better. The guy didn't understand why she lived in such poor conditions, because she is incredibly talented. The maid reported that Lord Tesric had come to see the princess. The girl ordered him to be let in. Upon entering, the guy bowed politely and thanked the princess for the invitation. The princess noted how unexpected it was that Tesric arrived on time today. Putting the book aside, the girl invited the lord to sit down. He thanked the princess, sitting down in the offered place. Tesric admitted that he did not think that the princess would invite him first. She did too, but she didn't talk about it. The princess noted that this must be a great honor for the guy. In any case, the princess noted that if her request is too difficult, then the guy can forget about it. Tesric hoped that she did not doubt his ability to carry out the assignment. The princess noted that she was not yet seeing results. The guy assured Eclet that he didn't think they needed help. The guy noted that they seemed to be busier than usual today, so he didn't want to bother them. Anna said that it was all because of an extraordinary guest. Eklat did not understand what kind of extraordinary guest she was talking about. Anna said that this was a very important guest, the princess's fiancé. The guys were surprised. They didn't know that the princess was getting married. Anna corrected herself that this was probably the princess's ex-fiancé. She doubted they would get married now. Eklat worriedly asked what happened. Anna was surprised that the girl didn't actually know this. 
the maid suggested that he must definitely be the problem. Anna didn't understand how a man like him could even be engaged to a princess. Riven asked if the man was still pursuing the princess. Anna mentally apologized to Lord Tesric. There was nothing she could do if she wanted to survive. Suddenly, the maid said that she had completely forgotten about it. The princess wanted to see Eclet urgently. Tesric placed a small box in front of the girl. The princess asked if it was it. The guy with a smile invited her to open it and see for herself. The girl could already guess what it was. Necklace of Isonia. She didn't believe he actually found it. The girl did not understand when Tesric managed to do this. She decided that she should not open the box. Not without Eclet. The princess assured that she would open the box, but later, without haste. Now she suggested we go for a little walk. In exchange for the guy bringing her a necklace, she had something to show him. The girl decided that she had to act carefully. This was a meeting between the two main characters. Having brought Eclet into the garden, Anna said that she was busy and left. The girl did not know whether she should wait for the princess here. Tesseric called out to the princess, but there was no one nearby. The guy thought that perhaps she was lost. He didn't understand the girl. She didn't even open the box and wanted to take a walk. Tesseric looked in surprise at the waiting princess Eclet. The girl decided that everything is going according to plan. She didn't hear what they were saying, but they still met just like in the original story. She had the same sensations as when she first read it. The girl still couldn't hear what they were talking about. The wind carried away their words, but everything looked good. The girl decided that she should give them some personal space. That's all she could do. But she was so interested in how everything was happening, she could hardly contain herself. If the girl had known that everything would be like this, she would have asked for popcorn. She wondered what if they fell in love before returning to the palace. Eklat asked the guy who he was. He noted that he wanted to ask her the same question. Based on her outfit, Tezric guessed that the girl did not work here. Shelia was surprised that Eclet wanted to start working officially at the castle. The girl admitted that she felt as if she was only eating and relaxing here. The princess decided that this was good. Eclet assured that she wanted to be useful to others and asked Shelia not to be shy about entrusting her with anything. The princess noted that, formally, she invited the girl to the castle. The princess said that Eclet was here as her friend and wondered if this was not enough. There was no way she could get her friend to work. The girl stammered and introduced herself as Eclet Blanche. The girl decided that everything was fine and she could speak confidently. The girl admitted that she was in this palace as a friend of Princess Shelia. The girl asked the guy who he was. Shelia noted that Eclet was a great fellow. Tezric thoughtfully noted that first the crown, now this. The princess is really getting out of control. Shelia couldn't hear the guy, but she looked offended. Eklat asked again what the guy said, deciding that she had heard it. Tezric immediately apologized to Miss, assuring that it was nothing. The guy introduced himself as Tezric Roytargen. He said that the princess invited him and he came for a short time. Eklat realized with surprise that it was him Anna was talking about. This is the bride's ex-groom. Tezric was afraid that he had made a mistake. He was worried that he had put the girl in an awkward position. The guy asked why Eklat was in the forest, because it's not safe to wander here alone. Eklat admitted that she was waiting for the princess, adding that Anna said to wait for her here. Now Tezric understood why the girl so suddenly suggested going for a walk. He realized that he had been fooled. Tezric invited the girl to return to the castle, saying that the princess would not come. Eklat immediately asked in surprise why. The guy noted that this is one of the stupid pranks that she likes to pull on people. Acklet thought it was a charming joke then. Tezric noted that although they were still within the castle walls, this place was not the safest, so they should hurry. The guy noted that it would be an honor for him to accompany Acklet to the castle. The girl immediately asked him to wait, suggesting that maybe this time it was not a joke. Tezric noted that although the girl called herself a friend of the princess, she did not know her at all. Acklet knew there was a reason for their breakup. She was afraid what if they ended up losing the princess along the way. Tezric said that if Eclet was really worried about this, he would wait with her if it didn't take too long. Eclet decided that this man definitely should not get along with the princess. Eclet assured that everything was fine. She could handle it herself. She decided to go with the guy. The girl noticed in surprise that they had left. She couldn't hear their conversation, but it looked like everything had gone well. The girl decided that she just needed to return to the castle before them and pretend that, but then she changed her mind. 
deciding that it would be better to wait here until they left. Hearing footsteps from behind, the girl was incredibly scared, involuntarily screaming at the whole forest. Turning around, she realized with relief that it was only Riven. The guy asked the princess if she was okay. The girl did not understand what Riven was doing here and how he knew where she was. The guy admitted that Anna told him, adding that everyone was worried. The guy thought that the princess was lost. The girl decided that Marion asked him about it. She noted that the castle was just around the corner. Riven suggested returning right away. The girl thought that if she waited a little longer, she would probably miss them. Sending everything to hell, Shelia ordered Riven to follow her. Eclet called loudly to the princess as she walked forward along the path. Tezric silently followed the girl. He didn't understand what they were doing. Tezric thought it was a waste of time and didn't understand why he was still following the girl. Eclet recalled that she told the guy that she could look for the princess herself. Tezric reminded that the lands around the castle are not the safest place. He noted that the estate was large, so Eclet might never be able to see their lost princess. Eclet noted that this is why they need to find the princess as quickly as possible. Tezric admitted that, to be honest, he does not think that the girl could get lost in her home. Eclet decided that this man was definitely looking down on the princess. The girl was delighted when she overtook the couple. They haven't gone that far yet. Riven silently followed the princess. The girl decided that it was a good sign if they talked so much when they first met. Riven tried to ask the princess something, but she ordered him to be quiet. Riven did not understand what was wrong with the princess. Looking at Tezric, the guy remembered that they had recently crossed paths. He realized that this was the man Anna had told them about. Riven asked if this man knew Eclet. The princess admitted that no and added that this was their first meeting. The girl noted that they had already become so close. Riven admitted that they felt cold to him. The princess asked what made the guy think so. She asked Riven to take a closer look. Eklet noted that the guy should be more careful. Tesric assured that her warning was meaningless, since after this day they would never meet again. The girl did not understand what happened. Everything was fine a minute ago. She didn't understand why they no longer had reasons to meet, since they were the main characters. She suggested that perhaps this was just a quarrel between two lovebirds. Eklet admitted that it was not about her. She simply would not tolerate such treatment of the princess. The girl was surprised that they were quarreling over her. She decided that Acklet would never speak so rashly. The girl didn't know why, but she felt that today would be a good day. The necklace of the goddess is in her power. There was enough time for their reconciliation. She decided that they should all have some tea. Eclet was surprised to see the princess. She didn't understand when she appeared. It was so noisy here that the man thought something had happened, but nothing happened. Shelia froze in surprise when she saw the man. She was sure that this voice definitely belonged to her father, to the emperor of these lands, Alethan Aidenrose. Tezric immediately fell on one knee before the emperor, wishing him the protection of the goddess. The guy admitted that it was an honor for him to see his highness. Eklet standing nearby froze in surprise. Recognizing the guy as the eldest son of the Rutargan family, the man allowed him to rise. The emperor noted that Shelia seemed to have made some unusual new friends since they last saw each other. The girl also curtsied to the man, noting that she was honored to see his majesty. The princess said that the guy is one of the assistants who helps her with various matters in the palace. The princess said that she would gladly leave if her presence offended his majesty. The emperor assured that this was not necessary, because it was he who invaded here. However, the emperor noted that he was glad that everything was going smoothly here. The man said that now that he thought about it, he decided that it was time for the princess's debut ball. The emperor was looking forward to it. Marion said that she would now take her leave and asked the princess to call her if she needed anything. The girl kept thinking that even if she was destined to be a villain, she was so unlucky. Failure haunted the girl as soon as she took a step out of the room. This time the emperor appeared, whom she did not expect to see at all. She didn't understand what kind of look it was. The emperor must really hate her. Praise the goddess that the emperor's face had not changed from the one she remembered. Members of the royal family inherited the blood of the goddess, and along with blood comes powerful magical power, which gives a fairly long life. It's a pity that neither one nor the other applied to the princess, but what touched her most was something else. It was time for her debut ball. The girl tried to reassure herself that there was nothing to be worried about. 
The girl decided that perhaps this was a warning. Perhaps he is telling her to leave the palace before then. Originally, this would have been the scene of the princess's first meeting with Eclet. The girl realized that she really didn't have much time. After all, she now had a necklace. Opening the box, the girl was surprised. She tried to remember if the necklace originally looked like this. It seemed to the girl that in history he had more of a crystalline form. The girl suggested that maybe it had been changed. It wasn't because she didn't trust Tezric, but the princess decided that she should check the authenticity of the necklace at the temple before her debut. Eclet's love and her magic. The girl decided that in order to get some of this she needed to go to a monastery, instead of staying with the princess. Tezric admitted that he did not expect to see the emperor there at all. Thanks to him, the fact that the guy worked hard to get the necklace was simply forgotten. The butler noted that despite this, a sudden meeting with the emperor could be a good sign. Tesric reported that he also met a very strange girl there. The butler noted that the miss who was staying here, her magical abilities are growing every day. Tesric asked when she managed to become a miss for him. The butler noted that she was strange, so it's better to be on your guard. The girl believed that she could enter and stay in the largest house in the capital. The man added that even those who have seen her magic say that it is too much. The butler suggested that it might be best to request an assistant from the monastery early. There was a knock on the door and Tezric asked who was there. The girl replied that this was a strange guest and asked if she could come in. The girl said that she would like to repay Tezric. 